Hey everybody, uh, this is going to be the first time that I'll be doing the microphone with desktop audio, so it'd be really nice if I get some feedback on uh, the levels, uh, if I'm audible or if the music's too loud. Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, so you can understand what I'm saying? That's great. By the way, hi everybody. Uh, I've got a few windows uh, open here right now, so I'm uh, multitasking a little bit. So we're gonna start uh, in two or three minutes. I just wanna give people a chance to come in. Hey, Mato. Okay, well, uh, if you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, hear any problems with the audio, like the music should go a bit quieter or the vocal a bit louder, just uh, give a shout. Thanks for the feedback. All right, so for the people that have just come in, uh, what you can see here is an Ableton Live set um, done by uh, Obverse. Um, that's uh, an old friend of mine, and he's been doing this uh, solo uh, music project. He's gonna be releasing his EP soon. Uh, so I asked him to uh, make a, an Ableton Live file um, for the upcoming Twitch stream or two. And he's probably gonna be doing some more stuff in uh, the future. Um, it took a little while to get the ball rolling, as these things do. Um, but uh, basically, I'm uh, really happy with what came out. And tonight is going to be a new experiment for me with um, doing this kind of thing with Ableton Live and Cables um, together. So I'm going to give things like two more minutes, 7.35, um, and then I'm going to get started and dive right into the nitty gritty uh, details of attempting to make something resembling some VJ software on a live stream. What could go wrong? <laughs> okay, if anybody's got any... Okay, these pop shields really don't work. They look cool, but they just hit your head. Uh, if anybody's got any questions in the meantime, uh, please feel free to throw them in my general direction. I really need to get an external sound card. I've noticed uh, with so many applications open, sometimes when I'm gonna be moving things around on the screen, it might be a little crackle and pop. My apologies for that. I'm uh, still tweaking the system to work like this. All right, good evening everybody. Uh, big hi again to um, everybody that joined. Uh, my name's Andro, welcome to another live stream on Switch with Cables GL. Uh, as you've noticed each week, we're trying to do something different, mix it up, find that winning formula that makes everybody wanna keep coming back. But basically I think we're just gonna do um, a lot of different things and enjoy the fun that the platform has to offer. So a little while ago, uh, I said, I think I thought it would be nice to try and make um, a kind of like a uh, yeah, VJ setup with cables. I've always wanted to do it. And with the current situation and doing a lot of streams, just felt like a good time to start. So like I just said, uh, I asked a friend of mine, uh, his artist name is Upverse. Um, if you could provide an Ableton Live set, he did. So by the way, I did not make the Ableton Live set that's there or the awesome music that's from him. I'll be posting some links uh, later on to um, his work. He just uh, managed to throw out some teaser material tonight. And if I'm correct, he did um, a quick live mix of this actual Ableton Live file. So I'm going to just try and break down um, in brief what we're going to do uh, tonight or what I'll attempt to do. Basically, I want to get that Ableton Live file there, and I want to use it to drive and generate visuals inside of Cables GL. Um, now, the term VJ software is a very loose one. Um, the software like VDMX, Resolume, Resolume Arena, you can do 3D mapping. There's a huge amount of different things you can do. <clears throat> Tonight, I want to kind of focus on the strengths of Ableton and the strengths of uh, Cables GL. It's going to be a lot of exploration, a lot of back and forth. Um, I've obviously uh, refreshed myself a little bit with how to approach this whole problem, but um, outside of that, I'm going to be winging it most of the time. 
and uh, just hoping uh, that uh, yeah, I don't I don't get you guys bored with me uh, fumbling around or trying to get cool creative results. Because of course, trying to make something uh, you've not made before means you're not always going to hit the mark straight away at the beginning. So without further ado, let's get started. So um, it's going to be a little bit cramped once in a while tonight because I've just got this one HD monitor. I wish I could like stream both of my monitors. That would be really good. So um, this is the Ableton Live file um, that I got from, um, his name is Matine. Um, and I'm just going to break it down a little bit. So we've got our drums, bass, a profit. Um, I don't know what a CSL is in FX. So this is a really interesting set because Matine did the majority of it with actual hardware modular synthesizers. And he was kind enough to record all of the MIDI. So if we take a look, for example, at this kind of track, you see that we've got um, MIDI uh, notes down here. But we've actually also got the recording of the analog uh, modular synth sound, which is really, really cool. The drums, um, they were done inside of Ableton, if I'm correct, with the um, drum rack. But the majority of this is just like uh, modular synth hardware and effects, and that's why it's really got its own unique sound, and um, that's something I'm really excited to work with. That meant that it was a little bit more difficult to get started with this because this was not just everything is made inside of Ableton Live, and we found that quite an interesting challenge, and we had to go back and forth a few times to figure out how to do this. So I'm, I'm going to keep this... Do I want to download and install Git for Windows? No, I'd send off notifications. Okay, uh, sorry about that. So um, let me just find it. Here we go. So on Windows, there's this little program called Loop MIDI. I've covered it in the other Cables GL MIDI tutorials that we have on our YouTube channel. It's basically a virtual MIDI uh, port. It allows you to route MIDI from one program to another. Um, on Mac, it's IAC driver. Um, so basically what we've got here is a really simple tool, and this will allow me to send MIDI from Ableton Live to Cables or any other program that wants to receive it. So this is my way to make Cables communicate with Cable, uh, to make Ableton communicate with um, Cables, basically. Hello, Panda. Hello, Undefined Country Boy. Okay, everybody just give me one moment. I'm sorry. Far too long for a sweater. Okay, so back to the technical explanation. So um, I want to—I just basically want to get a lot of this data to come into cables. So the first part of this stream tonight is going to be a bit technical. You're not going to see uh, a whole lot of flashy visuals on the screen because this stream is actually about me also setting the groundwork and the framework uh, for the other streams. Because trust me, you don't make VJ software in uh, one uh, episode on a stream, no matter how hard you try. Well. That's what I think. So basically, I'm interested in this. I want to get the MIDI clock data in. Um, I want to get the kick, snare, hi-hats, uh, closed and open, the bass, the lead, and the FX MIDI data into Cables GL. And I want to get the MIDI clock data. I want to build a framework which is uh, robust and compatible enough that if I'm going to get a different Ableton Live file later from Obverse, that I'm going to be able to just plug it in and it will work without me having to repatch a thing. Um, so we've got this agreement now with uh, what MIDI channels and what MIDI notes that we use, even though he doesn't know about it yet. And um, we're going to go um, from there, basically. So let's do this. Um, so I'm going to jump back and forth between both of them a few times. So the first part is going to be a little bit Ableton Live-like. Don't worry if you don't follow it. This is going to last about five, ten minutes with the MIDI routing and things like that. So um, I'm going to just leave this here for now. So... Basically, we had this problem that if we wanted to, um, we, so we've got a recording here of MIDI and audio. And if you look here, we use follow actions. Watch this. So follow actions means that each of these clips can randomly select a clip in a different block with rules enforced. So it's a follow action. When an action is complete, it follows another action. So um, normally in live, these loops would just continue to play. They would not change. So now because we're using follow actions, we can get a sense of like, we're using a live jam screen, things will change up. I cannot predict now exactly what it's gonna do, which is great by the way, uh, because the music can just continue to jam a little bit in the meantime. But this posed a problem, which is, you know, we, we want these two to play together. We want these two to play together and so on, because otherwise the MIDI and the audio doesn't match up. So basically what we're doing is, and you normally won't have to do this, I just had to do it for the stream was, we're sending MIDI, out of live with MIDI notes, these ones here, and those MIDI notes are then coming 
not in a feedback loop, but close to being mapped here. So what, mean, what this means is if I trigger this one here, it's gonna trigger that one there. And then it gets to it. Let's put this on a lower amount, two bars. And if I'm gonna trigger this one here, it's gonna trigger these two there. Just give it a minute. I've got it on a slow uh, quantization. So that was a little challenge we faced. This is why you're looking at a lot of extra MIDI tracks on the screen um, tonight, basically. Normally, you would not be seeing these. These would just, they just have to be there for this stream um, to kind of work and for the modular stuff. All right, so now I'm gonna get started. So first of all, I wanna get the MIDI clock. Let's just put this over there for now. So I'm gonna go into cables and I'm gonna type in MIDI clock. I'm getting a MIDI clock up. And now I need to get MIDI in. And let me just turn the music down a little bit while I'm talking. If it's too quiet, you guys can give a shout. So I'm gonna grab the MIDI input device. So basically, um, loop MIDI or IAC MIDI driver are seen as MIDI devices, right? It's no different than this um, launch pad controller right here. You know, cables doesn't care. It's a MIDI input device. So go here and then I've made um, a virtual MIDI port called loop MIDI to cables. So I'm gonna um, click that. And as you can see, I've got that here with loop MIDI and I can see that there's data going through. So let's just check that this is gonna work. So what I need, now need to do is for the MIDI clock, um, I go to the MIDI input and I go to the clock and I plug it in here. Now if I click here and press F for flow mode, I can see that I'm getting clock data. If I press stop in Ableton Live, it stops over here. So that's like the hello world. So we've got MIDI data coming in. That's great. Now, um, let's just pull this out just so you can see a little bit what's going on. So I'm just gonna grab a sequence up and I'm just gonna plug these in. You know, it's gonna be a little bit of a tutorial tonight as well, not me just building stuff, because if you know me, I love to teach people um, new things. I, th I think it's sad if people don't understand what's going on. So here we've got like subdivisions of the beat, and if you listen to the music, um, basically this is just like following. So here we've got like a 16th, an eighth, a fourth, a half, and like a full bar. So uh, that's gonna be one of the things that we're gonna use tonight. Now, another important thing that we're gonna use is the tick duration. So right now I wanna set up a timing framework. So I'm gonna go here to the tick duration and I'm gonna to wanna to use this number in a lot of places. So we're gonna use a lot of uh, VARs tonight. So I'm gonna do VAR set number. This allows me to create a variable number. I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna click create new variable and I'm gonna call this tick duration. Okay, that's one. So another thing I wanna do now is um, get these triggers and wanna just be able to access them anywhere in the patch. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here now and I'm gonna type in send trigger. Oh, there we go, trigger send. So this is the same, it allows me to create a uh, variable basically. So this is a 16th. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say create new one. I'm gonna just call it 1 16th trigger. Um, I'm gonna copy the name like this. All right, so I'm just gonna pull this out. Cable's just gonna remember the last op that I wanted and I'm just gonna do that again and again. Okay, great. So let's make some um, variables, basically. Okay, trigger send. Create new one. Uh, one, eight. Paste. Go here. One, four. Paste. So right now I'm just doing this because I want to make um, variables, um, triggers available anywhere in the patch because this could get really uh, messy during the experimentation phase and I just don't want to have a million uh, cables going all over the place. So let's just tidy this up a little bit. Let's move this over here. All right, uh, we've got the tick duration. So another thing that I wanna do here is, to me it's really important when you're doing live VJing um, that you can reset the state of your patch. So here we have uh, clock stop, that's a really important one, and clock start. I'm just gonna use clock stop for now. Uh, so I'm gonna grab a trigger send, and I'm gonna say, um, go here, create new one, MIDI, and make it big letters so I can see it easily, reset all. So this will basically mean if I press F now for flow mode, keep an eye on this cable here when I press stop, it gets a trigger. 
So I can now use that to reset the state of everything in my patch uh, where this is possible to do it with. So um, I don't need the BPM for what I'm going to do tonight, um, basically. So let's just start this up again, because it's nice to have a bit of music playing in the background. Okay, so um, that's that basic stuff there. This I can now just access anywhere in my patch. Tick duration, I can reset things, and I've got triggers, no problem. So I'm gonna pull this up. This is our MIDI uh, input device, and, and now I wanna grab the note data from the drums. So if we open the drums, uh, let's just open a clip. Let's pull this up and do this. Uh, we can see, I'm gonna press stop, I'm gonna press preview, we've got Kick, snare, hi-hat closed, open hi-hat. So I'm interested in these elements, basically. So I'm gonna go over here, and now we have MIDI notes. So um, I'm gonna do var set object. So MIDI data is uh, an object, JavaScript object, basically the easiest way of saying it right now, instead of cables. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna click create new variable. Um, and I'm going to type in um, MIDI and notes and press enter. Now, I don't want this all being too bunched up here. So now I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to do var get object. So I'm going to access this variable over here. I'm going to say MIDI in notes. Okay. So what goes in there is now available here. I can just move that around everywhere, which is really important right now. Yes, the, uh, yes, Dean, we're going to be hearing it for quite a while. Uh, but once in a while, I'm going to press the stop key so the awesomeness can start again when I press play. So I'm going to pull this out, and I'm going to type in MIDI notes. So as you can see, this allows me to read a single MIDI note. By the way, please ask questions, um, and I'll do my best to answer, but I'm very focused right now, so sometimes it might be a bit late. Um, big welcome to the new people that came in. Hi, Framuni. Um, hey, Metagator. Um, I'm going to build some VJ software tonight with this Ableton patch and Cables GL and the part that you missed at the beginning. Uh, you can just watch later on with a recording. So um, there's a lot of different ways to do this, right? So I can go over here. I could manually click and select everything. So here's the thing um, that I want to do right now, okay? So let me just take a look here. So I just need to take a look at these uh, ports where they're going to. Okay, so they're going to loop MIDI port. So this is that loop that I need. So I'm just going to minimalize these actually, right? You don't need to see them. So I'm going to go here to the drums. Let's just let's just do this. So I'm going to go to the right of the drums. I'm going to press Control Shift C, and that allows me to create a new MIDI track. Now I need to grab the MIDI basically. Um, this is different for every single Ableton Live file. So there's not one thing that I can teach you here. So I'm going to type in drum grab. Okay. I have this MIDI track, and now if we click here, and this is something I'm going to repeat for everything. Um, this is like the MIDI track here. So now I say I want you to get the MIDI from drums um, monitor in. So I'm going to press stop on everything, and I'm just going to press play on the drums. And as you can see, I've now got MIDI notes um, coming in. It's grabbing the MIDI notes from this track. And the reason I need to do that is because um, this is now sending out audio, right? So now I want to send the MIDI to cables. So I go here and I pick the um, loop MIDI uh, driver virtual port, which I've called loop MIDI to cables. So I click that. Okay, so now we're sending the drums out on channel one. And just to confirm, I'm going to press F and here we've got the MIDI notes. If I now press stop here, this should stop. There we go. Okay, great. So now I basically want to create like um, a kind of um, a kind of mapping uh, for this. So I could look manually at what all these notes are, but I'm lazy and we didn't want to do that with cable. So we just made a MIDI learn function, which is pretty normal. So I'm going to call this one kick. Okay, with a little comment there. And this is my MIDI note. As you can see, when I click it, this transmits MIDI through to cables. Let's press F for flow mode. Great. So I just go here and I click learn. I now click this. And as you can see, the note just changed there, basically. And to just prove that this is true, um, let's grab a sequence and look if there's a trigger coming in. So, great, that's connected. So let's get rid of that. So I'm going to do that for the rest of the stuff. That's going to take a minute or two. Um, what I'm going to do right now is, this is the gate. 
Um, this is basically if there is a note down, the gate is open. <clears throat> if there is no uh, note down, then the gate is closed. So I'm going to grab this pool to number because it outputs uh, false or true. And as you can see, that's here with the gate, right? So when it's down, it's true. When there's no note, then it's false. So I do pull to number. Uh, I'm here, I'm gonna do a var set number because I do. I wanna have just all of this basic information available anywhere. So it's a bit of groundwork first, but that's good. It's gonna save us time later on. So here I'm gonna type in uh, kick um, gate. And that's just, is the gate open or closed? Um, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna do trigger send. And then I'm gonna type and I'm going to make a new variable and I'm going to call it kick trigger. All right. And here we've got the note number and the velocity. Um, I looked a little bit at the live set. A lot of the velocity stuff doesn't change. And I want to keep this string a little bit simple um, right now. Okay. So what I want to do tonight is create lots of little modules that I can copy and paste and reuse. Now, there's a huge amount of ways to get data like... Um, numbers and uh, booleans and triggers and do things with them and normally the simplest solution is the best one um, so we're going to try and keep it simple and we're going to try and build some complex behavior that emerges from some simple rules right so i've done this this is the kick um, so now i'm just going to copy all of this Control c and i'm going to paste Control v now i could link this through um, like this just so you know but i'm just going to do it like this for now I want to uh, keep it nice and clear for everybody. So this one we're going to call snare. Now I'm going to go a little bit fast um, right now because I don't want this part to get too boring. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say new variable snare um, gate. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to make a new variable snare trigger. Okay. And now I need to get the MIDI note. So I'll go here and I say learn. And actually, let me just check. Yeah, it's this one. So it did it, E1, great. So we're gonna grab this, we're gonna copy, and we're gonna paste. Now, here's the thing, I've got two hi-hats, right? So if I double click here, I, I do not wanna have two MIDI note ops um, for a closed hi-hat and an open hi-hat, that's just not worth it. So I'm gonna get rid of this, and I'm gonna type in MIDI note, um, and then I'm gonna get MIDI note filter. It reads a range of notes. So the great part of this op is, is that you can give it um, a start and end. So let's connect this. So this is my start note. This is my end note. So we've got that here, and we've also got a brilliant learn button. So I click learn, lowest note, and then I click highest note. Bam. And this um, connects there. All right. Uh, by the way, I just want to say that uh, Undefined Country Boy, uh, um, uh, Undev, um, made these uh, MIDI ops. We designed them together, but he did most of the implementation, and uh, he delivered uh, great work with them. And they're really um, a pleasure to work with. So uh, great work. Undefined Country Boy. Okay. Now, um, we're almost there. So basically, this is now going to react. Sorry, I'm going a bit fast. With the closed and open hi-hat, which means I've got less ops to keep track of. Okay, so that's cool. So now um, I've got everything from the drums. It's a kick, snare, two hi-hats. Okay, great, let's take a peek. Now, what's one last thing I need to do? Well, the MIDI velocities, um, they're numbers between zero and 127, so that's 128 values. Um, but a lot of the time, that's really like low accuracy for what you wanna do, like if you get 128, uh, and you try and map it to 360 to rotate a cube, it's going to skip. It's not going to rotate smoothly. So there's lots of these problems that you hit with like this old data format of MIDI. Um, so I'm just going to keep things really simple. I like things to be between a range of 0 and 1. So I'm going to click this, and we're going to use the normalize velocity option. So instead of the output of the velocity being 0 to 127, it's now 0 to 1. I find this much easier uh, for basic math and multiplication, uh, basically. And go here, zero to one. So that's the drums done, nice and quick. Now I wanna grab um, the bass synth. So let's just take a listen to that. I'm gonna press stop all clips. I'm gonna press play. So this is the bass synth, it's called Pulse. So I'm gonna do what I did before. I'm gonna press Control Shift T. Uh, let's do that again. I've gotta have it selected. I'm gonna make a MIDI track and I'm gonna call this Pulse Grab. 
Now, these streams, uh, everybody, I'll be doing two or three different things tonight. It's like really focused on an Ableton Live file. I'm also going to do a stream where uh, I just have pure audio coming from like a kind of DJ set. Hey, uh, Ronnie or Rictic, if you're here, I could really use one of those. Um, so I'm going to try and approach a couple of different scenarios that you can do with building VJ software to um, different setups from the musicians. So I look here at Pulse. I'm interested in Pulse MIDI. This is where the MIDI is. So I go here to Pulse Grab and I say MIDI from Pulse MIDI. I say Monitor. And now I've got the MIDI notes. And now I'm going to say MIDI to Loop MIDI to Cables. And now I'm going to put this in Channel 2. So I've got all of the drums on MIDI channel one, and I want the bass on MIDI channel two. Just gonna click save. You never know if something's gonna crash. Not that it never does, touch wood. All right, so um, I don't need to use the MIDI note filter. I could, um, but I don't think um, Obverse did anything really with multiple notes for this. I think I asked them to keep it pretty simple. Oh yeah, one last thing. Let's go over here and let's make a new variable. I'm gonna call it hats gate. And here, create new one, hats, trigger. Like I said, the first part of the stream isn't gonna be very exciting. It's uh, putting the groundwork down. So I don't want the MIDI note filter, I just want this one. So I copy it, I'm gonna paste it here. Let's comment stuff so it's nice and easy for you guys to read. So type in here, hats. And here I type in, I'm just gonna call it bass for now. Okay, so let's do this part first, I'm gonna say, Base gate. Just like normal programming, you gotta you gotta make those variables. Um, base trigger. Okay. So um, I'm gonna go here now, and I need to um, connect this right. So basically, I just know it's on MIDI channel two. So I can go to MIDI note, and I can say MIDI channel two. And if I press F now, uh, one minute. Ah, no, of course. Sorry, my bad. There we go. I do need to use MIDI note filter. <laughs> MIDI note is only listening to one note. My bad. Okay. All right, let's get this. Let's plug that gate in there. Okay, so for anything more than one MIDI note, we obviously need uh, this one. All right, great. So um, I already took a quick look at the set. I mean, it's safe to say that nothing is going to be below C0. And probably nothing is going to be higher than um, um, B4, basically. So I'm going to press stop. I'm going to go here to MIDI note folder and I'm going to click, um, let's get the range here. I'm going to click learn. I'm going to click C0 for the low note. And then I'm going to click um, B4 for the high note. Great. So now this will take all these different MIDI notes. And so I'm going to press play. And as you can see, it's now playing the different uh, MIDI notes. So here we see the MIDI notes, right? Let me just get rid of the pencil. Um, I do change that with Ableton Live 10. Doesn't matter. So here we've got the current note number. So as you can see, um, these these notes here. This is something we could maybe use later. There's the velocity of the notes. So this is all we needed to do to get like all of the base information that we're interested in right now. Um, and now let's call this correctly. Uh, let's call it base. Now we're going to get this, Control c Control v and we're going to repeat the same thing now. We're going to grab this and put it over here. Now, I'm going to press Stop, go over there. I know it's a lot if you've not seen this before, but um, don't worry about it. This is an empty MIDI track that can go. So now I want to grab the Profit, so just do the same again. Control shift t I'm going to say MIDI from Profit MIDI, that's this one right here. And now I'm going to press Play. And let's just stop this one. Get this a bit wider. All right, so it's a bit hard to see, but here we've got the um, MIDI stuff uh, for the profit. So I'm gonna call this uh, prof grab. And once again, I'm gonna send the MIDI to cables. And this one I'm now gonna put on channel three. So that's this one. Um, I'm gonna leave the MIDI note range the same. It's a pretty safe bet. So MIDI channel three. Um, and as you can see, I'm now getting that synthesizer in. So I'm now going to call this um, Profit. And I'm going to call this uh, Profit Gate. Um, profit 
for a go. Okay. All right, so that's all I needed to do for that. I've only got two more to go, and then I've just basically got all of my variables and all the data that I need. And considering that's just taking around half an hour, that's actually pretty quick. So let's go over here. I'm going to copy this again. I'm going to paste it there. I'm going to hold in the Alt key and right mouse button, and that allows me to copy and click and drag a connection over there. Learn your shortcuts inside of Cables GL. They will really save you a lot of time. So I don't know what CSL is actually. Uh, it's okay, that's Ophus. Hey, Ophus. He's the guy that did the music. He's in uh, the chat. Hi and welcome. Ah, Rictic, DJ Mix. Awesome. Great. I'll, uh, I'll be hitting you up uh, this, uh, this week about it. Uh, can't wait to do something like that. All right. So let's get back to this. Ophus, what, this, what is this CSL? Maybe you can uh, sometimes pop into the chat and tell people a little bit about um, this kind of stuff. I think that's interesting uh, for people to hear about. Okay. So let's just go here for now and call this. I'm just going to do this CSL. I have, I have uh, no idea what it is. All right. So then we're going to go here. I'm going to create a new trigger. CSL trigger. And then we're going to go here. We're going to create a new variable. We're going to call it CSL gates. All right. So this one is going to be... One minute. We're going to click there. Let's check it. Okay. So this is a group, right? So when I make a new MIDI track, it goes to the right of that. And once this is done, I can just fold it up. I don't, I don't need to look at it later. So I say CSL grab. And I want to grab uh, this one, right? Lead MIDI. So go here. Yeah, the screen's getting a bit full. MIDI from um, lead MIDI. And we say in. And then we say MIDI to loop MIDI to cables. And then we want channel four. Let's press stop. And now let's press play here. Uh, whoops, my bad. This one. Let's hear the audio. So we got a lot of MIDI information there. Okay, so this is CSL, and this just has to be channel four. If I press F, as we can see, we're getting it there. If I press stop, it stops. That's great. So the very last one to do now is FX. I'll just save my patch quick. So holding Alt, right mouse button, copy this over there. And I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna type in FX. All right. Now, I understand for the people uh, that use cables, you might be looking at all this Ableton stuff and thinking, what? Don't worry, a lot of uh, what's going to be um, finished at the end of this, you could just apply to anything with MIDI, a MIDI controller or uh, just a MIDI track or stuff like that, but that stuff we'll cover in some other streams. So I'll go here to FX. Let's get that um, gate done first. FX gate. Let's go here and then make a FX trigger. Okay. And we're once again going to grab the MIDI. So Control Shift T to make a new MIDI track. I'm going to rename this FX Grab. Grab is just my term for I'm grabbing the MIDI from somewhere. So I'm going to get the MIDI from, let's take a look, FX. So we've got FX MIDI. That's what I want. So go here, MIDI from, FX MIDI, and MIDI to, loop MIDI to cables, and last one. Channel 5, let's check that this is working. So we stop all clips. Um, let's go here. We're in flow mode, and now let's press play. Okay, so I've got to put this on MIDI channel 5. Press stop, press play. There we go. Great. So that's working. So now we've got like all of the basic um, stuff mapped that we need. Um, you know, I could have just like built all this from scratch, just pasted it in. I don't think that's the idea of the stream. I think the idea of the stream is that everybody can see how this stuff gets constructed and built. So what I'm going to do now is um, I want my screen space with cables back. I'm going to um, press play on the intro part. So basically there's three sections here. Uh, we have stage one, stage two, and stage three. They kind of like ramp up uh, with uh, the intensity of the music and parts getting added. So basically, if I press play here for the people that don't know live, it's going to trigger everything on that line there. It's called a scene. So I press play. And now it's going to go off and happily jam by itself. And this is the best part. Now I don't need to look at it. It's going to just um, do its thing. So now I'm going to go into full screen with cables, which is nice because that was getting kind of cramped. 
Okay, so let's just make life a bit easier for people that might be coming into the stream later. We're gonna go here, I'm gonna type in notes. Comment, use the comment op, it's so good. Um, it'll help you just find your way in a patch when you lose track of it. You can zoom out and you just see what's there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this, control C, control V, and I'm gonna call this um, MIDI in. All right, press F just to check it all. Okay, so we've we got everything now. So, you know, what what do we do now with VJ software? What is VJ software? A lot of people um, get a film and uh, they throw a lot of effects on it with Resolume um, uh, Avenue or something like that because creating real-time graphics is really not that easy uh, at first, you know, and, and a film is a very immediate result. And that's great because it allows people to get a feel for VJ effects and how to make these things connect and just to use a MIDI controller. But uh, basically it's Cables GL, so we say uh, go real time or go home. So we're not gonna be using any films tonight. Okay, so. Um, stream has too much swag for it. <laughs> okay, so um, to me, the loop MIDI in is like the, the, the head part, right? So I'm gonna just put that up here. And you know, later on, I don't want to look at this later. I just want to go, ah, okay, um, this this is done. I don't I don't need to think about it. It's my MIDI section. Okay, so um, now I want to kind of create like, um, how do I put it? I want to create two or three pieces of information that I can use from these parts here. These are just triggers. And as you can see, they're all in different um, divisions of like a bar, basically. So I want to use that because I don't want everything to always follow a kick and a snare. Um, so now I'm going to do like what I did here. I'm going to create a little um, system. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more advanced though. Um, so uh, hold on to your hat. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to get a trigger receive. Okay. So this gets a trigger from um, a variable trigger basically. So I'm going to go here and right now I'm going to just start with a 1 16th. So let's go here. So just to show you this is working. I just want to teach everybody a few things as well tonight. Uh, do this, go into flow mode, and this one here, this 1 16th, you can see that it's there. If I now put this on something like um, 1 half, then that's also going to add up to this one here. Okay, so let's get, let's get busy with this. Let's put this on a quarter for now. All right. So uh, I want to use this trigger to make things happen. So first of all, music um, needs a counter. So we're gonna make a trigger counter, okay? And as you can see, this this keeps track of how many times a, a trigger has happened. Now, the thing I like about this op is I can reset it. It has a reset button here. So you might have guessed that I'm gonna get the um, trigger receive. And I'm gonna go to MIDI, reset all. And now I know that whenever I stop Ableton Live and restart it, that this will go back to zero, that I have a guaranteed state. Very important when you wanna have your stuff in sync later. So let's tidy this up. I'm gonna go out of flow mode. All right, so now I'm gonna get this and I'm gonna throw it into a modulo because I wanna create a loop, right? This trigger counter can go on to nine million and beyond. So by putting the modulo on two, I've got a number that's alternating between zero and one. So let's put it on four. So now I've got zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. This is kind of like a musical sequence, right? So I'm gonna pull this out um, and then we're gonna get a trigger on change. Pretty important. This one was um, a little bit difficult for me to figure out the first time. So this will only basically send a trigger out. Let's just test it when a number changes, which is like really kind of handy. Uh, you could say, oh, I can just grab this one there, but this was just easier uh, for me. So I'm going to use this trigger on change number, and then we're going to pull this out. I'm going to say if equals then. So this is a basic uh, conditional check. So um, if that number is equal to that number, we get a trigger. So I'm going to put this here. Because if I plug in a trigger from main loop or something, this would trigger all of the time, like 60 times per frame. I don't want that. I just only want it to send out one trigger when a condition evaluates to true. It's like putting your finger on a MIDI um, key. You press it and it only does the thing once that it's meant to do. Okay, so whenever it gets to zero, it's gonna send out a trigger. Um, and we go here and now we're gonna grab the toggle bool. 
So this allows me to toggle between true and false values. So let's go into flow mode, like right here. And uh, guys, if I need to zoom in more, please give a shout. I'm, I'm very focused now, so I could be losing track of it. So as you can see, each time a trigger comes in, this changes between true and false. Okay, I mean, that's kind of like what you want. It's like pressing the button down and then letting go. You know, there's two states. So we want uh, like two kinds of states. All right, and then, then one of the, the mightiest ops inside of the Cables GL Arsenal is the um, bool anim. So this allows you to animate between two values based upon a boolean. All right, and now I'm gonna have to make a main loop because basically um, this needs to be connected to main loop. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna make a main loop. I'm just gonna throw it over here because I do not want my MIDI getting in the way of the graphical stuff later. So I'm gonna grab a sequence op. I'm going to press F, and right now, I don't want to pull a long cable all the way over there. That's just going to make my patch messy. So I'm going to grab a trigger send, and I'm going to put this over here, and I'm going to make one. And this is just my convention. I'm just going to call it T1. If I've got multiple triggers later, it'll be T1, T2, T3. And I now know that T1 occurs before uh, T2, for example. So here we have a main loop sending all these triggers, and this is what bull landing needs. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to trigger, receive <clears throat> and I'm now going to put this on uh, T1 and I'm going to plug that into bool and I'm going to press F okay almost there <clears throat> once again like everything here I want this data to be available everywhere in the patch what Marfell? later on you just uh, Rictic you just open the patch later on uh, that I'm going to publish and you just copy a strip and then you just uh, make it do what you want basically what do you mean Marfell? okay I'll tell you what I'll break some stuff down later and make things even simpler you know I'm I've played around with this, so I'm creating uh, something that's pretty modular later. I don't need to use all of this, and you don't need to use all of these things to create some VJ stuff inside of cables. You could do all of this with just free ops, but then your options are limited, basically. So I'm, I'm kind of trying to create a Cables GL modular setup, basically something that's very easy to um, exchange data from one uh, thing to another. Um, logic hell, yes, then, then logic hell. Um, this will make perfect sense later on. There's going to be a couple of things that I'll do. So I'll go here. Um, yeah, too much granularity. Well, the thing is, you know, I mean, this here is just repeated everywhere, right? These are just triggers. This, this, I'll be honest, this is not very hardcore stuff yet. It will get much more hardcore. Um, so don't worry about it. And when in doubt, that's why we have uh, public patches with cables. You can just grab it and just use it as you see fit. So I want to have this um, information here available. I, let's just show you what the bool anim is doing. So it, it goes between a value false and a value true, right? So toggle bool is outputting a false or a true, right? Which is also the same as zero and one, okay? So what the bool anim does is it basically um, alternates between those two values like this over the duration, okay? So... Let me just put this on one right now. And as you can see, whenever it alternates, it takes a second to go from zero to one and then one to zero. Awesome. All right, so I want this available anywhere. So I'll get var set number. So go in. Um, and then I'm gonna get this and I'm gonna call it um, set. Uh, actually just, no, I'm gonna call it one one bull and in. And that's just my way of knowing later on. Um, sorry, my bad. This is one four. So I'm going to go here, create a new variable. One four, bool, um, anim. I'm going to keep that bool anim always between zero and one. Then I've got like a unified number range, just like the MIDI velocity. Everything that I'm working now is just going to be between zero and one. So there is no um, math help, basically. Um, it's just, don't worry about it. It's going to be, it's going to all make sense later on when we grab the mighty cube. Uh, to start with, because the Mighty Cube is uh, how all great things start. So, here we go. Look, I've made I've made a strip here, right? Ah, I called it one, two. Whoops. So, let me go here and then put this in one, two, so it just matches up. All right, so you might see where I'm going to go with this. Let's move this up over there, and I'm going to grab this strip, and I'm going to go over here. Let's zoom in. So I'm going to actually just put this now on 1-1 one, one, 
and let's actually call this one one wool anem. Let's copy that part and then we control C. All right, so this is only gonna work on every uh, bar basically. So I'm just gonna copy all of this. Actually, I just wanna make it, ah, there's one last thing I forgot. Um, yeah, just, just, just bear with me guys. It's, it's, we're building a system here. So um, if I'm gonna look at my MIDI clock, now we have this set tick duration. Uh, I don't wanna go into the specifics of what a tick is. It's basically just a good way to get the length of something dependent upon the BPM. So later on, I'm gonna use this because if the Ableton Live file would speed up or slow down, I want my animations to speed up or slow down accordingly. If I wanna spin a cube 90 degrees and it takes um, one second, always when I speed up the Ableton Live set, it might not finish its completion. It might not get there. But if we speed up Ableton Live set and then it does it in 0 0.5 seconds that it's following, we have our VJ software following the BPM. More on this later, that was just a brief explanation. So I need that tick duration, right? So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna say var get number. All right. Now I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna grab tick duration. And now I'm gonna plug this into multiply because that's a really small uh, number. So basically I wanna use this tick duration to determine the duration of the bull anim. Now watch what happens here. I'm gonna click this into duration, we press F. And as you can see, this is getting its ticks. So if I now increase the multiply to say 16, we now have um, a BPM controlled bull animation, uh, basically. Um, you're gonna see this in action later, so don't worry about it for now. I'm just gonna put this on for, the thing I'm interested in is creating a chain that I can reuse, right? So we got this, I'm gonna pull this down here. Great, let's put this over here. That's a chain. Now we're gonna reuse it, nice and easy. So I'm gonna go over here, and now you're gonna see why we did what we did before. So now I'm gonna grab half trigger, uh, and the only thing I've gotta do here is make a new variable, um, one, two, Whoops, had the wrong thing there, bull anim. So we're just gonna rinse repeat. And like I said, I wanna make a kind of modular setup here, right? That I can just like reuse all this stuff. I don't wanna keep jumping back and forth between things later. I just wanna um, go wild with patching in a bit. Okay, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna paste. Oh, that makes sense, right. So I just paste, I'm gonna grab one four trigger. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna say one four bull anim. Paste again. And we click here and then we grab the one eighth trigger. Let me say one eighth bull anim. I'm gonna paste one more time. And then we can finally um, get round to putting some stuff on the screen. I'd like to thank you all for your patience. Going as quick as I can. Uh, kind of feeling the pressure a little bit, you know? I think with uh, streams, you, you feel like you've uh, got to keep everybody uh, uh, entertained. So I'm hoping you're all enjoying watching this um, so far. Uh, I, hope they, I hope the anticipation is worth it. All right. Okay. Um, Yeah, okay, so Rectic just asked, any considerations for making ops that combine these things for mere mortals who would love to use cables for that but get stuck with these abstractions? Um, so basically, as Steema said, you can use um, sub-patches. Um, we are uh, busy planning a way that you can uh, have a collection of ops, which is kind of like bundled together for you. I can't say much more about that because still under development and still on the planning. But yes, Rick Tick, this would then mean um, that, you know, these kind of like layers of abstraction and logic could all be put together and you wouldn't have to worry about how it works. We would just expose um, the things that are interesting to you to then be able to use it. All right. Thank you, Metagator. Um, that's great um, to hear. So let's just check I got this right. Okay, so we got, look, I'm gonna just press Control S. Um, isn't this beautiful? It's nice and tidy. I, I love tidy. I mean, as everybody, as anybody who knows me, I'm, I'm definitely a straight lines person. I, I love curvy cables, but straight lines go straight to my heart. So 
Now I'm going to explain one or two things. So we've got our MIDI clock. We've got a trigger on each different subdivision of a bar. We have a way to reset the state with MIDI reset all. And so far, these are just triggers, right? Uh, these parts are it's nothing too complicated. And one last time, we get a trigger. We count how often it's been triggered. We use modulo to make that number loop. Let's go to 1 16th. That's easier to see. So as you can see, we're looping. Um, we then say when it's equal to zero, which is the start of the loop, just like, you know, a musical beat. If you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, this is the equivalent of it triggering on one. So that's now we do zero, one, two, three. So it's just for any musicians out there, you just minus one, it's the same. We alternate then between a the true false state, and then we use that to have a value uh, that it goes up and down between. So as you can see, this one's going really rapid because we're on a, 1 16th right now if we go over to 1 4 which is pretty much what i'm going to use most of the time tonight uh, and we go here now uh, you can see that on every 1 4 if we get this okay real cables have curves <laughs> well that's like your opinion man okay Okay, everybody, this is getting really, really serious because, you know, when, I, when I've got to take my, uh, when I have to take my socks off, then it's time to get some really intense patching. But it doesn't matter. I mean, with everything going on lately with video conferences, uh, you don't even know if I'm wearing pants, right? Okay, humor aside, we've got pants off. <laughs> All right. That's like our opinion. Ooh. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is great. Um... Thank you, Thomas Helzer. Uh, uh, I'm going to keep it up, and uh, I've got a really good feeling with everybody in the chat. Uh, everybody's a lot of lovely people here. So you know what? I'm going to keep this really simple because I've got all these super complicated ideas, but that never works, right? You've you got to start simple. So let's just test that this thing works, right? So I'm going to go over here to main loop, and I'm going to move this trigger to the side, and I'm, I'm just going to start with a simple cube first, okay? So I'm going to go over here. Uh, I'm going to grab a transform because I want to be able to move the cube in 3D space. Let's change that clear color for a minute. For new people to cables, clear color is the color of the background here. Uh, you'll see it in a minute. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to just make that a little bit brighter. Uh, go over there. Okay, great. Now I'm just going to grab a cube. Awesome cube is awesome. Um, let's give it a matte cap material for now so you guys can just see what I'm gonna do. So it's got a little bit of shading. And um, let's grab a scale XYZ. Um, and you might think, Andrew, why are you using scale XYZ? You could just change the width, height, and the length of the cube, right? Well, basically when you do that, you're rebuilding the mesh and the geometry currently with cables. We're gonna change that in a future update. So if you ever wanna be sure that your geometry is um, fast and not being rebuilt, just use the scale XYZ up, right? So I can now use this to make the uh, shape do things like that. Okay, great. So let's put this back on one. Um, can cables GL run on a local host? I'm going to leave these kind of questions to Panda and Steam. Um, sorry, uh, I need to kind of stay on VJ mode right here. Uh, any questions about that, I will instantly dive into if I see it. Okay, so let's go over here. Do control S, just back up everything. So, you know what? I just want to make this cube rotate right now um, on a musical count. Let's keep it really nice and simple. Uh, for anybody that followed the videos, you're going to see that that's been done uh, before already. Okay, so give me one moment, everyone. Uh, I've got quite a few windows open here. That is what seems to be slowing down a little bit my performance of cables. So just give me a minute. Having um, Twitch and some other stuff uh, running, that's uh, a little bit heavy right now on the um, CPU. Okay, so let's go over here. Do control S. So I want to make this cube rotate, right? Let's just go here, rotate X. Okay. So um, now I'm going to look at what I can do to make that happen. So let's just scroll over here and let's look at this one for trigger, right? So here we've got this number from the uh, bool anon. One for bool anon. Let's just go over there. So I'm going to do var get number, right? I want to get a number. So go here and I'm going to say, Give me the one for 
boolean in, okay? And this is between zero and one, okay? So I'm gonna just plug that in here and I'm gonna plug it on rotate X. Now we're not gonna see a lot happen because that's just one degree. So I'm gonna just show you a few little tricks here for the people that think it's math L. Um, that's looking at you, Rick So click multiply. And now I'm gonna put this on say 90. And because we're alternating between true, false, zero, one, we're going between zero and 90 now, right? So I'm gonna just show this in the simplest form. So this cube is now going between zero and 90. You know, if we'd wanna offset it, uh, we'd go here, we'd add, for example, a sum or a subtract, and we could put this on 45. Um, sorry, go here, there we go. That's a way of offsetting it. So, you know, we, we could do this and we could go in there and make some uh, really kind of like um, simple behavior. But I wanna go a little bit further with this. So we know that this pool is working. So we're gonna use a couple of different ops here. Let's get rid of this. I wanna use map range. And I'm gonna use this a lot. Map range, got a tutorial about this one. It allows you to uh, map, uh, remap a uh, value range from one value to another. So we could say I want zero to one, which you know a bool anima always is, to go from minus 90 to 90. Great. Now let's put this in zero. Now, the thing is, this doesn't feel very um, snappy right now. And what I want to show you is, if we go over here to the one for bool anim, this is the one that we're using right now, yeah? This tick duration and multiply, that's determining how long that takes. So if I put this on one, it goes way quicker. Put it on two, it goes a little bit slower. Three, goes a little bit slower. Now, one thing I'm thinking of that I didn't do is I did not stop and restart live. So all those trigger counter ops that I was plugging in and copying, uh, they've not all started from zero. So not everything is starting at the same time. So by clicking stop now in live, I send a MIDI reset um, trigger to everything. I'm gonna press play. Okay, let's go back here. So now we've got a cube rotating. All great things start with a cube. Okay, so um, let's go copy this and copy this. And you know, this is just a hello world. This is just like, we're gonna go much further with this later. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say, you know what? Um, give me an eighth bull anim, which is double the time of the quarter, right? So zero to one. And you know what? I wanna map this to the scale. So I'm gonna say, okay, let's go here. And this is now gonna fly off uh, the screen. I'm gonna say, give me 0 0.1 to one. Now the thing is that one eighth is triggering so quickly that um, it doesn't finish the end of its animation. So I can go over here um, and I'm gonna put this multiply on two. Okay, great. Cool, anim, okay, that's all good. All right, so this isn't so spectacular, but this is just to show you that this is working, right? So there's a lot of different things um, that we can do here. Just give me one moment. Okay. So let's say that I'd want this to rotate endlessly, okay? I'm just gonna get rid of this because I'm trying stuff out. Let's put this back to zero. So I'm gonna grab uh, the trigger, trigger receive. It's a simple challenge. Let's make the cube endlessly rotate around. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go to the one quarter trigger. And I'm gonna grab a trigger counter. This is counting the trigger, right? Uh, there we go. And now I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna put this on multiply. And let's say I'm gonna put this on 90. I want to show you a few different approaches to stuff we're going to do. Now, we don't see anything happening. It is rotating 90 degrees each time, but it's not going there, right? So what we could do right now is we can use a really cool op called the Smooth Op. So I'm going to put some Smooth. It smooths out jumps from one value to another. So I'm just going to grab this trigger. Now, this is going too fast for my liking, and this is why we set everything up now. I can go here and I can say, give me a half. Okay. 
that's feeling more like it. Now we get something a little bit more um, in sync, basically. Now we could make this really obvious and we could say, why don't we let this only turn when there's a kick? Well, we set all of this up, right? So we can go here now and we can say kick trigger. That's looking more like it. Okay, so here with the smooth, we can determine how quickly that goes with this um, number here. Okay, so far so good. So I'm just gonna build a very small finger. I just wanna give everybody like a kind of introduction into where I'm gonna go. And that's cool because I actually have no idea where I'm gonna go with this later. It's a big um, improvisation session tonight. So I'm gonna grab this, Control C, Control V. I wanna get that snare. Okay, so I get the snare trigger, right? Uh, I'm gonna pass this trigger through to here. As you can see, smooth needs a trigger from main loop. I'm gonna move all this down because I need my tidy cables. Seems straight lines for the win. <clears throat> and I'm gonna connect um, this one to, actually, so yeah, let's do this. Um, let's go here. I'm gonna say toggle bull, right? So we're gonna alternate between true false on each snare. Um, and then I'm going to say bull to number. So I want to change the true false to zero to one. You can see it here, true false, and that now becomes zero and one. And I'm now going to plug this into a map range. I'm just going to keep showing you these little building blocks because there, there's not actually that many different ones that we're going to use tonight. So I've got zero to one and I want it to go from 0 0.2 to 1.2. And I'm going to plug this into the scale. So I'm going to plug this into smooth. And what I want to do right now is I want to create a kind of transient of a snare where it goes like putts. So it's like really fast with the attack and it's going to slow down with the decay. So I'll go here to smooth and I'm going to plug this into X. Now, this is on a really high number. Let's put this there. Mm, let's just make it snappier for now. Yeah, you know, this, this is feeling kind of right now. Um, I'm not gonna go into the global parts, um, like the duration of the bull anim and everything and keep changing that. Like, that's just something that I'd set up later with a MIDI controller, but I don't want to get too distracted of working on the patch, pointing the camera at a controller and things like that. So uh, bear with me. But as you can see, Awesome Cube is awesome. Well, that's exactly what I think. So there's a lot of things that we can do here, right? We can come up with a lot of rules, um, just off these basic triggers and keeping count of the triggers. <clears throat> so let's go over here. We've got this trigger counter, right? So we know we can use a modulo. By the way, I'm winging most of this, so we're gonna, it, some of this stuff might not work out to be really cool. So I'm gonna put this on uh, four, and this will give me a number between zero, one, two, and three. Um, actually, let's just put it on two, because this is the kick trigger. So I can say, if equals then, so whenever it equals zero, okay? Um, and let's get this trigger from there. So whenever it equals zero, it's gonna send out a trigger and then I want to um, make it rotate on a different axis, but I want that to change. Ah, actually, let's do this. This is just to show you a very small thing of what we can do. So I'm gonna get trigger random number. So it's gonna trigger a number between a min and a max. I'll tidy this up later. So I'm going to say 0 0.2 and 1. And this I'm actually going to plug into the um, scale here. Let me just check this if it's working. Hmm. Not doing a whole lot. One minute. Let's make this higher. Actually, let's plug it in here. There we go. So 
So the thing is, this isn't happening a lot because modulo's on um, two. This is a little bit of regular behavior, but basically I could say if it's not equal to this, then do something else, but I know what, I'm not happy with this. Let's try and keep it a bit simpler. So let's get rid of this for a moment. So I've just got this basic rotation here and I'm just playing around. I'm just thinking, what is it like that I want to try out here? You know, I just want to experiment. I want to just make a couple of cool little systems that I can use. So let's get my cap. Let's get rid of that. Let's grab a basic material. Okay. Now let's go over here and make an image compose because um, I'm not too sure where I want to go with this right now. Let's try something simple. Um, so I'm going to grab the stripes up and I'm going to put this here. So this is the texture. It's uh, using the viewport size right now. I don't want that. So I'm just going to put it on 512 by 512. Now I get a square texture. I'm going to offset it by um, 0.25 so it matches up. Okay, great. Uh, I'm now going to use this for the... Let's just plug it in here for now. Great. We could also use it with the opacity, which gives an interesting effect. And if we enable discard transparent pixels, we can get this really um, nice, cool effect there. So I'm going to put this just on white for now. Okay. So I want this cube to rotate the other way once in a while. So let's, let's do something with that. So I'm going to do map range to, um, 0 and 90. So 0 to 1 from the snare is going to be remapped to 0 and 90 and we're running it through smooth. So I'm going to plug this into rotate Y. That's interesting what's going on here. If it acts too fast. Yeah, okay, this... This is looking all right. This is cool. I know it's really simple what we're doing now, but you, you got to start simple before you go complex. Okay. So this is looking pretty cool. Um, hi, Juju. 808 Juju. Um, no, that is not my music. That is from an artist called uh, Obverse. O-B-V-R-S. Um, ba -bum. Obverse, you're in the chat. Um, post a link to your SoundCloud. Um, I forgot to um, do it at the start of the stream, and right now I'm in there. So I hope you're hearing me. If not, I'll plug it in there later. Okay, so this is really simple what we've got now, right? But I mean, as you can see, it's, 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 uh, it's really working with um, the music. There we go. There's Link from Overse. He did a really cool um, mix down of this Ableton Live track that you're hearing here. And you know what? Let's step it up a bit. Let's go to stage two. Um, just so you can see what's happening here. Ah, this is, this is going to work. So look, we, we've got these basic rules right now. So I'm going to go to stage two, which kind of like picks everything up. Now you have to imagine you could plug a MIDI controller into this. You could change the duration. There's a lot of stuff that you could do. So you could be kind of like jamming along with the Ableton Live file. And primarily this, this stream is aimed at people that would say, hey, I want to use cables to like make actual real-time visuals with like say a musician on stage. You, know, you could be stood right next to them, just grabbing that MIDI input and bang, you know, you're making um, visuals happen off their like live set that they're jamming with. Like how awesome is that? So um, let's go back to stage one. Actually, let's check, check stage three for a minute. Now look at that. Visuals are swapping up and they're reflecting what's happening with the music. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so this is going the right way. I'm enjoying it so far, but we need to go back to stage one because we, we need to save some of the epicness for later. All right, let's go back a bit. Right, so let's go to full screen. So we've got a cube here, right? Um, we've, got a, we've, got, we've got some effects, <laughs> all right? So what can we do with this? Let, let's take a peek. Um, so right now we're using this for the transparency. Okay, so ah, that, that could bite me later on. So let's do another image compose. And this is freestyling it, guys, you know. Uh, 
I'm just gonna just gonna be making stuff as I go. So let's grab this, move it up here. Uh, I like I like space on my screen. So we're gonna go over here. So um, this is like the basic black and white image. Um, and I'm gonna plug it in to draw an image. And I've got this, I'm gonna turn off use viewport size, I'm gonna put it on 512 by 512 because this is affecting the opacity, right? So if I plug it in here, we get this solid cube, but it's not transparent anymore. So we're using this as a kind of alpha mask, right? So I'm curious, let me just try this now. Yeah, of course. Let's go here. Just give me a minute, guys. Ah, there we go. All right, so I can change the color of this now here, like this. So you know what? Um, little simple thing. Let's try making um, a semi-random color once in a while. So I'm gonna grab the trigger receive. Okay. And I want this just to happen, say, every half bar. So I'll go here, and I'm gonna say, trigger random number, all right? So on the trigger, this will create a random number between minimum and maximum value. So I'm gonna go here now, I'm gonna make a HSB to RGB. All right, so I'm gonna just show you how this works. I get the red, plug it into red, I get green, plug it into green. Blue, okay. So now by moving this one finger with hue, I can change the color. By the way, guys, sometimes it might be looking a little bit choppy with what I'm doing. That's because I've got the Twitch stream open and running cables uh, and uh, Ableton Live, so that can just slow stuff down a little bit. Okay, so I wanna make a random color. So I'm gonna pick a range and I'm gonna go, hey, you know, I wanna go from um, 0 0.435 to 0 0.55, okay? So we go minimum 0 0.435, 0 0.55. And now I'm gonna plug this into hue. Let's press F for flow mode. Okay, flow mode will reduce the FPS a little bit. All right, I'm just trying stuff out. No guarantees it's all gonna work. So the whole idea of the stream, I suppose. Um, values jumping around. Uh, it's very sudden, I don't want that. So let's go here. Uh, let's add a smooth up. Smooths out jumps in values, right? Now we need a trigger from main loop. So we grab this one. And now it looks a lot simpler. Now the cool part is what we just made here. We could use something like that to change the clear color. So I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna put it there. Um, and I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna say R, G, B. So I actually wanna get this output here. I know it's between 0 0.435 and 0 0.55. I wanna get that smoothed output. I wanna plug it in here. And I'm gonna do um, subtract. And I wanna subtract, say, 0 0.1. 0 0.2, uh, minus 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Not bad. There's something else that we could do later. Okay. Let's get some more space. You know what? Let's get rid of this for now. I'm just trying stuff out. Okay, so hmm, what else could we do with this right now? Well, you know, we, we, we've got this cube, right? And we've got this material stuff done with it. Um, well, basically, before I do that, I'm gonna try something else. Okay, so the thing is, um, this is just like one layer right now, okay? Um, and I think if I wanna make things more interesting later, I could change the cube for a different geometry or for a different shape. Um, I can add um, texture effects. <clears throat> I can also put a different shape behind this one, right? Because we're working in 3D space. So maybe we can do something like that in a little bit. Um, that would like show through here. That would be kind of cool. Ah, you know what? Actually, let, let's just do this. So 
So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say var get number. Okay, I mean, it's kind of tricky doing this and whoa, I'm thinking out loud for the stream. So uh, bear with me if I'm a bit all over the place. Um, hmm. You know what? Let's get. Let's do something with that base. Yeah, okay, so let's do something with the baseline. I forgot, I'm, I'm losing track of it a bit. Okay, base, yeah, let's use base. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna do var get number, right? So I'm gonna get the number and I've got like a zero or one from the base, which is the base gate right here. So each note is gonna alternate between um, zero and one. And never keep it inside the first. Ah, that's a mighty fine idea, Thomas Elza. Hold that thought and remind me in a minute. So I've got this base gate. Uh, it's between zero and one, right? So I'm gonna do map range. And you know what? I'm gonna look at stripe sound and go, what, what, what can we do? Uh, I'm gonna look at rotate. Hey, look at that. Zero to 0 0.5, full half rotation. So I get zero and one, and I map it from zero to zero point five. Um, now we're using the base gate there, so now I'm gonna plug it into. Actually, I could use boolean in for this, right? Mm. Yeah, I could. All right, let's do this. So we do boolean. Uh, need to trigger. So go here. Want this stuff to stay modular. Don't want it all getting plugged into everything. So I grab trigger receive and I grab T1, which is my kind of main global trigger for everything else. So go to boolean. Is it doing its thing? Okay. Do I have to do number to bool? Do we have number to bool? Ah, okay, that one's, that one's biting me right now. Bull to number, hmm, okay. Um, then it looks like we're not gonna be, oh, it is working. I just was not seeing it for a minute. Okay, so this is reacting to the base, great. Let's put the duration on, let's grab this part. I'll use a tick duration to multiply. No point in reinventing the wheel. I'm gonna plug this into duration, great. And now we're gonna make this go from zero to 0 0.5, which is a rotation. Uh, let's plug this into stripes, rotate. Hmm, I'm not too happy with it. The bass is really uh, busy right now. Would this work better with the kick gate? Probably. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta keep it um, really simple, basically. Yeah, hey Steam, uh, definitely, uh, that was working. I think I just lost track of what I was doing for a minute there. Okay. Okay, so like that's, that's one thing we're doing there. What else can we do with stripes? You know, what else could we do? So this is the color. Um, this probably isn't gonna work. At all. <laughs> I know, of course, we don't have enough of a solid color. All right. So let's take a look at this. So let's take one of a quick step. Let's go over here. Oh, yeah, no, sure. Uh, thanks. <laughs> so I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to render to texture. Okay. Um, boom, image is gone. So basically what we're doing is we're getting the 3D scene and we're rendering it into a 2D texture. Why? This means we can do post-processing. I'm just, like I said, I'm trying to set up a framework here. Uh, I, I wish I could have like the VJ software like done and finished tonight. Well, actually kind of not because then we're finished. We never want to be finished with the creative stuff that we do. 
So I had a full screen rectangle. So as you can see, this is my scene in preview mode um, being turned into a 2D texture. So let's go over here. I want to make sure I don't get caught up right here. I'm going to make this really big. I want my post processing like right out of the way. Come over here, yeah. So uh, I'm going to make a basic chain, right? So I'm going to go here. I'm going to type in draw image. And yeah, I need to have an image compose. Okay, great. So that goes here. Get rid of the texture. We're going to plug that in there. And then we're going to plug this into here. And basically, we're going to just set up what we already had before. Uh, we're going to turn into the texture. I want to get rid of the jaggy, so I'll put MSAA on 8. Get it a bit smoother. Slightly different look, but all good. So there's a couple of things that we can do here, right? So let's go ahead and grab an image compose. And now let's get the depth texture. I'm just interested how this looks. Let's plug this in here. Go down. Um, let's put the far plane on a much lower number. Now look, we've got so we got there this depth, right? You know, so let's do draw image. And let's get that blend mode. Look at that, we've we've added this kind of like uh, fake 3D depth to a basic material which basically doesn't have any depth and any shading. So that, that, that's a cool trick. I'm just trying stuff out as I go. Okay, gets rid of the clear color, but I'm not gonna worry about that for now. Okay, that's one thing I can try. Let's just get rid of this for now. So, let's go here. Mm. So we've got good old edge detection, right? So we'll go here. Lower this. All right, let's go here. Add, so we can add these white lines. Okay, that's, that's something else we could do. I'm just trying to think in like a few effects that'll give me a bang for the buck. Um, I'm not gonna use lights right now from Mimi, from Mimi, because um, I'm just I'm just trying to build a framework right now. I don't want to zoom in too much on a particular look or style. I'm just focused on movement and modularity, uh, basically. But thanks um, for the hint. So that's edge detection. Uh, what else can we try? Another good one, I think. Zoom blur. So zoom blur can be good as well. You know, this, this is that kind of stuff I can imagine working good with things. You know, and this is what I love about cables. We can just try this stuff out really quick now. You know, we can go here. We can say, how does this look? You know, we could make a whole new compositional channel out of this and tweak that as we see fit. Okay, chromatic aberration, of course, but that always goes on um, last. So let's look at ops.gl.texture um, effects. Ah, okay, one minute. I, f I forget about them sometimes, we've got so many of them. Uh, so we've got scroll texture repeat. Uh, this, this is a nice one uh, for later. Um, okay, let me just take a look for a minute. I could use fog, stripe shapes, color map. Hmm, what am I looking for? This is hard, I'm not sure what I'm looking for right now. It's too easy to glitch everything right now. Um, hmm. Okay. Ah, mirror. Yeah, this this is just a classic. But then we kind of want to use two. Yeah. Okay. So that's another one. As you can see, I'm just trying to get a couple of cool effects here. Um, We've got axis X or Y, and of course we can get two of those. Plug that into that and plug it on Y, and as you can see, we get this good old school like uh, kaleidoscope effect with four um, stages, basically. So let's unplug that. That's another thing we can use. Okay. 
Uh, sorry guys, the, sometimes when the stream gets a little bit heavy, it's slowing down my cables patch. So now we're back here. Um, let's take another peek. Looking for some effects here. Yeah, Luma key. This is something we can use later. Uh, we don't need it right now. Mm, we already got zoom blur. Pixelate could be handy, but like not right now. Uh, also could be good. Bulge pinch, set to one. That's a bit too much. Yeah, that's the thing, like right now, if my content would be like really complicated, a lot of these effects don't work. And I think like with what I've got in mind, that's like this trade-off between the two things, like you can make really complicated content, like a, like with mesh instance with like a huge amount of cubes. Uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna work with a lot of post-processing then. Use simple content, you can really go wild with the post-processing because I think um, that's a lot easier for people to see. Ah, Kaleidoscope, there we go. Let's put that in sites for. All right, we can move center. Yeah, this is, this is a really, it's a classic effect in the, the VJ world. We can put this on two, one, two, three, four. Okay, change the angle. You know, we can, we can get a lot of stuff out of that. I sometimes find it a little bit overused in the, the VJ scene, but it, it does work and make things look nice and symmetrical. All right. Ah, this was the effect that I was looking for before. Not bulge pinch, barrel distortion. It's it's a really nice one. <clears throat> As you can see, we can kind of make stuff look like it's on a monitor and we can just make that cube not be so perfect. Okay, that's another one I wanna keep. Okay, let's go over here. I'll add the chromatic aberration later. Bulge triggered. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm just looking right now at what I can do <clears throat> um, with this simple shape to make some stuff cool. Because don't forget, like right now we've, um, we've got this going on. But I mean, this is like really just a hello world. But if we go over here and we get the kick trigger, for example, um, we could then give me one minute. Get this and put it up here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually count this. I think I already made that thing somewhere. Let's do this. Um, I want to make this move back and forth. Right, so we're gonna use a toggle. Boom. Yeah, I've got to make a little bit more happen right now um, to see if what I want to do is going to work. So, um, bool to number. So it goes between um, zero and one. And then I'm going to put this... Actually, no. Um, <laughs> let's make stuff way easier. Trick a random number. Let's keep it simple. So right now I want to move this cube forward and backwards. So sometimes we're inside of the cube. Yeah, okay, this could be cool. Yeah, so let's say we can go to um, 1.5. Then we're inside the cube, which is kind of cool. And uh, let's say we can go to zero. Okay, so we're gonna say, um, hmm. Now this is the thing, right? Like I want it to be able to go to zero and 1.5 and maybe another value or two in between. So how would I do that? Well, you know, if I put this on zero and 1.5, I'm gonna get, I'm, I'm never gonna hit zero and I'm never gonna hit 1.5. So let's now say that I wanna have four possible states on the Z axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this on four. I'm gonna put this on integer. All right, so now I get um, zero, one, two, or three. And now I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna grab the map range up. I'm gonna say I want you to map a minimum of zero to a maximum of three to zero and 1.5. Uh, 
plug in. Let's just see if this is going to be working. Okay, just give me a minute. I'm missing something really obvious here. Huh? Ah, sorry, I've got it in Rotate Z. It's been a long day, guys. Sorry, position Z. There we go. <laughs> All right. So now we've got these um, four possible positions it can be in, but I'm guaranteed that once in a while I'm going to get 0 or 1.5. But as you can see, this is jumping around a lot. So I'm just going to grab the good old smooth up and we're going to plug that in here. And we're going to plug it into uh, position Z. All right, we're going to grab this trigger. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So what we can do is we can uh, make it go um, slower or faster, depending on if the number is increasing or decreasing. So I don't like the way it goes in so quickly. So I'm going to put it on a 4 and 32. So when it comes towards the camera, it's going to be a lot slower. But when it goes away, it's going to be a lot faster. Let's just see if this is going to work. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm enjoying this. This is uh, nice. I mean, I, I like to create generative um, visuals a little bit off uh, these uh, little simple rules. About time to turn up the music a bit. Okay, 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 okay. Let's do this. So we didn't do anything yet with that hi-hat, I'm thinking. Uh, it's pretty rapid. I mean, what, what can we do with it? I mean, we have our clear color here, right? That's working. Uh, let's just do a good old black and white for now. Let's just make everybody really blind. Um, so what we're going to do is... Let's take a peek over here. So we're going to look at the hats and we've got the gates, right? Cool. Okay. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do a uh, var get number and I'm going to get the gates of the hat, hat's gate jumps between 0 and 1. So, you know, um, let's just plug it into a map range for now. I'm going to plug it into red, green, and whoa. a little bit too epileptic like for my taste. working so far so good if i think it's a little bit too much i can obviously just um go here and do a multiply so it's going between zero and one so i could like lower the intensity a little bit let's put it on 0 0.6 that's way too much 0 0.8 okay so far so good like i said guys tonight is the concentrating on like the the framework like getting it in there well played. Thank you, Thomas Helzel. I hope I'm saying these names correctly. All right. So this is going pretty cool so far. And I really want to come back to what Thomas said before. We're going to be putting a cube within the cube. Ha! <laughs> Cubeception. All right. Let's tidy this up a bit. Uh, I don't like uh, messy uh, patches. So where were we? All right. So now I've got a little bit more going on, on the screen, like more generative possible outputs, right? It's not the flashiest thing, but... All great things start small. <laughs> All right. So um, what I want to do right now is I want to just start experimenting a little bit um, with some of the stuff. Uh, all right. So edge detection is one of those things that I would normally put on last. Let's look at mirror. Let's grab this.
that's creating some pretty cool outputs. Yeah, that's, that's really working so far. All right, okay, I like this. So what we need to do is we need to have a way to, um, ow, hmm, we don't have a blend mode uh, for this. Hmm, we don't have a way to bypass it, basically. So offset can do some pretty cool stuff, but I think it's kind of acting like, um, Kaleidoscope. No, this is not acting the same at all. No, let's not use this for now. Uh, sides one, yeah, sides two. Yeah, okay, sure. No, let's not use, I don't want to use the Kaleidoscope. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go if true, then. Um, so if it's true, then, else, nope. So I'm going to put this up. And as you can see, I can now turn this on or off with a Boolean. So now I just want to, I don't want to have this stuff responding. Actually, let's grab the lead. Let's grab the lead. You know, there's quite a few pieces of music and sound that I've not been using. My apologies, uh, it's a lot to keep track of with the stream as well. Okay, so let's think about it. Let's, uh, let's go back here, go to the notes, and we're going to look at the profit. Okay, yeah, we're going to look at the profit. And yeah, okay, we can see what's happened there. Let's use the profit. Let's see how this is going to go. So we're going to get the profit. We're going to go over here. So I'm going to do a var get number. Whoops. All right, let's go here. And then we're going to do uh, profit gates. And this is just a zero or one. It's just going to turn this effect on or off. Let's take a look. That's not what I was expecting to have happen. All right, let's see how it works with the base then. Uh, base gate. Hmm, okay. This is the thing, like how do, how do I control this now? I feel it's like too unwieldy. So I'm gonna get rid of that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do trigger, receive. I'm gonna get that. And I'm gonna say, and you know what? I'm gonna go to, um, I'm gonna go back to the profit because that was actually kind of cool. I'm gonna do um, trigger counter because I don't want it to happen every single time there's a trigger, right? Uh, I need to, um, get that main reset. Don't forget, I want my state to reinitialize whenever I use a trigger counter or something like that. Okay, so now I want to loop this right. So use the good old fashioned modulo. Okay, and let's say that every when it gets to zero, I want it to. Um, send out a bool. Okay, so I'm going to put this in zero. So it doesn't happen all of the time now, right? So let's now plug this into if true then. Still not exactly happy with it, but it's going more in the direction that one. But I think that's got more to do with the music right now. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's basically called a pulse, the bass down there, and that's the one that I really like. Let's go there. Now this music part's dropping out a bit too much for me, uh, stage two, so I'm gonna put it on stage three. Let's ramp it up a bit. Okay, cool. So what we can do is we can create this kind of like um, state. So here we're doing the mirror on X and Y, but you know, we could go here now. And then if it's not true, it's gonna alternate between um, one or the other. Don't think it's gonna look cool, but it's just to try it out. That could be all right, but I want the dual mirror. So let's put this back. So I think to myself, like, okay, you know what? This is actually, because we don't have uh, a blend amount with um, mirror, um, I'm gonna, it's gonna make it a little bit tricky to. Intense cube is getting intense. Okay. Uh, Bruce Lane 06, what code would that be that you'd like to view? Okay, hold up. You mean this button here? Well, basically, uh, Bruce Lane, you can click on any up inside of cables and press the E key, which is the same, um, and you will see the code for that up. You can just do that with uh, pretty much anything. So I can click here and then I can click this. Why it's not working now, I'm not too sure. Yeah, so basically just click on an op, press the E key, and the code will appear in our uh, online editor. All right, so here I've got like this channel. Great, so I'm gonna go over here now. And that's just for the mirror, and the reason I'm having to do this, guys, is because mirror just doesn't have like um, a blend amount, basically. So I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna plug it into there, and I'm gonna set it back up, cool. So now I'm gonna add a second effect. So let's look, you know, I think edge detection with the profit could be really awesome. Let's try that. Yeah, okay. So um, I can actually just go here and say var get number. Yeah, it's JavaScript. Yeah. So uh, Bruce Lane, uh, Panda just answered it there. Basically, um, you could click any op here and then click clone op code. Uh, and then it would ask you uh, for a name for your new op and it would just create an entire copy of that op and you could just then go in there and make it your own, add your own ports, change the code, whatever. On YouTube, we've got uh, a really cool channel, short six minute videos, coding with cables. It shows you how to get started with um, triggers, with maths and with arrays, basically. And that should be more than enough to get you started. And if you're on the Cables GL main page and you go to the Learn section, we've also got a Coding with Cables repository on GitHub. More than enough to get you started there. And if you've got any questions, just come over to the forums. Um, can we add some GLSL too? Uh, you're looking at a lot of GLSL um, right now. Um, oh, can you add it? Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, definitely. Okay. So... Uh, I'll leave those kind of questions up to Panda. I'm getting a bit distracted here. So I'm going to go over here and now I'm going to go to the, let's say the profit gate. Why am I not getting anything from the profit? Let's check over here. Is it, is it actually working? Profit gate. F. It could just be that it's not playing now, but I think it is. I oh, know, Profit's just not playing. We don't have it in stage three. Okay. So, back to stage one. 
actually, ah, if that's not in stage three, mm, that's not going to work so good. You know, I'm just going to do this with the snare. Yeah. Okay. No, actually, I'm just going to make this work on a half boolean. Yeah, let's do this. No, obviously I've made a little mistake somewhere. Um, half boolean. Let me just check this for a moment, guys. I know this is a big thing that I uh, forgot before. Uh, I forgot to reset the state of all of these things. Uh, that's silly. But that can happen. So I'm going to say trigger receive, MIDI reset all. Okay. That one slits under the radar before. And I need to be sure that everything starts from um, the same state, basically. Okay, so let's go back to live. And we're going to stop it. Just want to make sure all that stays initialized. Play. Now, let's get back to that um, edge detection, if it's working or not. I'm not seeing a change. So, one half bull on him. Must have missed something there. This is permanently on one. That's that's not good. So I'm not sure what that is. Let's take a look. So we're on half half trigger. Let's just check it's all coming in. Okay, much lower on four. If equals down to zero. Great. It's counting through. And it's just really, really slow. I expect it to be quicker. I think that's just there. Uh... But it's really weird because right here I see this value changing. But it doesn't seem to be coming in here. Okay. Well, I don't want to. Well, I, ah, why do I have two? Hmm. Unusual. All right. That explains it. I'm not sure what that is. Okay. So that's just turning that bull on him on and off occasionally. Great. All right. So the edge detection is working. Let's uh, look at the good old soon blow. Now, you know what? Hmm. Zoom blur could be cool. I'm going to do something based a little bit upon what I did in a previous um, tutorial, because there's nothing wrong with reusing a cool trick here. Um, okay, so let's go here. Let's go for the good old pixel displacement. 
All right, so this is gonna allow me to displace pixels based upon a black and white map. And that's actually really cool because that's gonna give us a lot of possibilities. Yeah, let's let's focus on that because I could throw 9 million effects at it, but that's not something I wanna do now. Okay, so um, this is the part for my shape. And trust me, this will get more interesting um, later on. This is just a single humble cube right now. But if I can't make a cube look awesome, throwing more stuff at it isn't gonna make it cooler. So now I want to kind of create this um, gradient section. And you know what? I don't, I don't want it becoming too cluttered now. Um, trigger send. I'm going to call this T2. And I'm going to call it um, displays maker. Okay. So, you know, T1 happens first, T2, and then the rest. Cool. So I've got this trigger here. And I just want to go to... I just want to go to a separate part over here. So I'm going to do um, trigger receive. I'm going to say, give me a T2. Right down. Cool. All right. And now I'm going to go here and I'm going to grab, uh, actually first a sequence, just in case. I need that later. Maybe I don't. And I'm going to go to an image compose. And I'm, going to, I'm going to just start with something really simple. Um, so I'm just going to grab a kind of hello world. I'm going to grab the checkerboard. Let's put the image composed, not on the viewport size, but 512 by 512. Okay, great. We've got this. And we've we'll got the checkerboard and we can, let's click this, this. And as you can see, we can change it like this. And we've got a centered option here, which allows you to do things like that. Great. Let's put it on just four for now. This. Okay. So um, this texture, I want to just send it over there. Uh, I feel like my patch is getting a little bit unwieldy. So I'm going to do uh, var set texture, which is a really cool new op since our last update. It was the last one missing with the variables. So we can just now send the texture anywhere in the patch. So I'm going to call this um, displace um, texture, enter. Okay, so now I can go down here. I can go to pixel displacement. You know, and yeah, it's getting cluttered. Let's just, whoops. I just want to move all this stuff away. Just throw it out of the way for now. Don't need it. Okay, so I want to get that texture there and I want to send it over here. So I'm going to click var get texture. Okay. Zoom in a touch so you guys can see it. Oh, we've got one texture right now. Displace texture. There we go. If I click it, we see this. So now I'm going to put it on pixel displacement. And as you can see, we now get this. This really opens up a whole world of um, possibilities. Um, we've got the pixel displacement strength really high right now. So we're going to turn it off and we could put it on 0 0.01. And as you can see, we've already added this like really subtle um, effect to the image, right? So there's, there's a huge amount of things we can do with this now. This is just like really um, simple. So we can go to rotate texture. That's a good one to have. And I'm gonna turn off crop. And that then means we get this kind of repeat. As you can see, we're already getting like a huge amount of different looks, just off a striped cube with transparent opacity. Um, so I could go here now and we could um, rotate this and get a lot of different looks. So I'm just, I'm just playing around right now. So we've got the checkerboard. And the thing is, I want to kind of make it where this can swap up later. Is it root? Yeah, cool. Root trigger. So um, let's put this in here. This is going to allow me to just experiment and create like a couple of different gradients, right? So like right now I've got um, checkerboard. Uh, let's go over here and get one of my favorites, pixel noise. Cool. Um, so if I now put this on one, where now I'm going to just show you a flow mode. We can use an index here to swap between um, the gradients. Uh, I'd like to show you that here. So yeah, I click this now and I click zero or one, and we're swapping between them, right? So it's got a flow mode. Um, I'm going to grab a good old timer because I love pixel noise. Let's put this for now on, say, 4x4. Four four. This can all change later. And let's go here. 
and let's put this on 0 0.05, 0 0.05. Okay, great. Getting a bit distracted by the chat. Now let's plug this into timer. Uh, oh, sorry, Z with pixel noise. Now, as you can see, this happening here is affecting stuff there, basically. And we could make that go like really wild. Uh, I'm gonna go here. Actually, let's just put it on 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Now that jumping effect I don't like, so a pixel noise has got a really cool feature, loop. And that means, as you can see, that things don't um, jump abruptly from zero to one and then back to zero. They kind of like go up zero to one, one to zero, which is this really like, kind of cool effect. Let's slow the timer down, 0.25. Okay. Now I'm just curious what happens here if we go to pixel displacement and we turn the blend amount and put it on say 0.5. That adds a, a nice kind of mode to it. I could say add. And this I like a lot more than just say um, a normal uh, kind of glitch effect because this feels more controllable, uh, basically. Um, let's put that on clamp. Zero displace. So this is, this is going in a cool direction. So, you know, we, we can go really far here. So we've got this image composed, we've got pixel noise. We can once again uh, do something like this, right? And then we get this kind of effect and we can turn the width up. And now we're just displacing these kind of lines. Ah, actually, that's not really so cool. Let's do this. Yeah, this is this is going in a way uh, that I like. So, you know, like I said, it's all experimentation. If we put this on complete, we get this kind of thing. Okay, uh, let's just disconnect that for now. So we got a lot of um, ways to make gradients inside of cables. So um, that's this one. Let's go over here. Let's grab. Yeah, I did that in that tutorial, but um, that's just a that's just a really nice one. It just works really good. I'm just trying stuff out. Okay, I'm gonna put this in two. All right. So as you can see, we have got this Voronoi displacement there, right? So if we go to image compose, click this, and we go to movement, we get this, and if we go to time, whoops, now of course this being on the whole time isn't that cool, so this is something that we could um, make go on and off once in a while, right? I think I'm gonna use a constant like the snare. Okay, so I'm gonna do um, far get, am I gonna get the number? Well, that's kind of bad. <laughs> so when you grab a screenshot, it's uh, the MIDI clock up. Okay. I have no idea what just happened there, guys. Let's try just deleting this. Okay, that was weird. I'm gonna just press uh, Control Shift R, do reload, the cables patch. Yeah, undefined country boy. There was a problem with that, I'm not sure what it was. Let's just hope we can reload and everything's good. So I'm just going to stop live, start again. Okay, and we've reset our state. <laughs> yeah, things go wrong. Yeah, well, we can watch the error back in uh, the, the recording of uh, the stream, um, obviously. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this again. Is this going to cause a crash? Fargate number. 
Okay, so far so good. Um, and let's go to um, snare gate. Okay, so this is giving us a zero or a one. Yeah, okay. So let's just grab a, a smooth. As you can see, I really like smooth. It's a really great way to just add control over transients and attacks. So I'm going to plug that in amount X, amount Y. Now, of course, you've got to get these gradients right. So if I'm looking at this far noise, um, I think there's just a lot on the screen. I want, I want less. Let's put it on like five. That's a bit too little. Let's put it on ten. So later on, I can like control this and put it on one. Zero. Two. Okay, cool. And let's get the pixel displacement. And I think I want to put this on gray. Let's put it on repeat. So basically that kind of determines like if the if pixel gets pushed off the screen, what kind of wrap mode is used. I'm just going to use repeat for now. Yeah, that's okay. Because I want it just to come back into the image. Okay. Hmm. So I like the idea of this, that we can have like this um, gradient, um, uh, sorry, this pixel displacement um, creator there. Um, let's look at something else that I could do. So you can scroll around the left, uh, I can click texture effects. Great. Uh, sometimes you know what you're looking for, but you don't remember it. Triangle noise. Uh, actually, we got a new we got a new hexagon noise. Let's try that. That's not been shown um, in the stream yet. So let's go here. Click this and let's put this now on three. So just in case you're not keeping track of it, this root trigger allows me to pick one of these effects here. All right, there we go. Let's get hexagon noise. Put the scale on say 0.5. And the image compose. So we can get this timer. Reacts like pixel noise. We plug it into Z. This stuff does this. Let's move the seed. And let's put it on loop. And I actually want that pixel displacement to happen. Uh, to take a lot longer. So I want it to come in really fast, but I want it to take a long time to go out. Actually, let's put this on 32. That could be a bit too much. 16. There we go. Better? Well, that's 316. My bad. Okay, that one could also work. Now, if I get this, I'm gonna copy paste that and put that there, and then I make the scale, say double. I need to see what I'm doing here. Now I'm gonna put this on multiply. Actually, let's, let's do this cool. So I'm gonna put this on one, that one on two. Yeah, this is a pretty cool pattern. Actually, I just wanna make it way glitchier. Two, four. That's nah, okay. All right. So this pixel displays is a lot when it hits one. That's actually way too much. I think that's just kind of ruining the effect. So I'm gonna put it on say, even that's a lot, 0 0.25. Yeah, okay, I think that's a lot cooler. All right, control S. 
So just to recap for a minute here, what we've got is this kind of um, really simple um, effects there going on, this kind of shape. And we've made like one or two basic um, post effects passes. This is really simple right now. It's not a lot, but <clears throat> the way they all interact with each other causes a lot of <clears throat> complex behavior to come out. So let's just do something with this so I can wrap this part up. Because like I said tonight, it's this kind of framework. Um, so let's keep, let's just keep track of every quarter note. So I'm gonna do um, trigger receive because I don't want this to be dependent on the kick or the snare or anything. I go here and I go to one quarter trigger, okay? And then I'm gonna put this on trigger counter. And I could reuse a lot of stuff right now, but I just like everybody to see, you can just build this stuff quickly and easily when, once you're familiar with it. So I look here at my root trigger and it's like zero, one, two, three. Um, I might also just want this effect not to work, right? So if I would just move everything up by one and I'd use zero, then there shouldn't be any pixel displacement. I actually just does it over the whole thing, which is also kind of cool. Let's go with that. So I want to use zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. All right. So I'm going to say equals. Um, so when that's going to be equal to, uh, sorry, modulo. We want to create a loop, right? So zero to four. So we're going to put this on five. So now it's going to loop zero, one, two, three, four. And whenever it hits zero, um, I want it to create a bull. And with that bull, I'm going to say um, trigger changed true. Triggers only after the value has become true. And now I'm going to go to trigger random number. Okay. Um, so when let's go from zero to four, zero, one, two, three, four. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to put it on integer. As you can see, once in a while, it's changing the number here. And this should allow me then to get a different, um, let's just check it here. And another thing I need is this to reset when I stop live. So don't forget if I would like save this and then just restart it, then everything would be in the same state. So I'm just gonna go here back to live. I'm gonna press stop. So that means everything's now reset state, press play. Now let's go to stage three, uh, stage two. I'll take it back with the zero part. Don't like that. So I'm going to put this on four. And I'm also going to put this down back on three. And I'm just going to move all these up, basically. Save. Okay, so of course, all this could be plugged into a MIDI controller and controlled by hand. We're not gonna do that. So let's go a little bit more in depth now. Uh, let's, 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 let's spice up this cube. Framework's getting there. These are all pieces that we can reuse later to control other things, right? Let's move this over here. I'm gonna press save. All right. Um, so right now I want to move the camera back for what I want to try. So I'm going to go here. I'm in the render to texture, so I'm in the, um, the 3D scene. So I'm going to go to transform view. Uh, this allows me to change the viewpoint, basically, exactly like it says. So I can go back on the Z axis now and go here. And as you can see, that already gives me quite a few um, different looks depending on how close we are. So I'm just going to move back 
because I just want to see this for a minute. Um, and let's see if this is going to work. So I am going to do this. Mesh instance. So, so let's grab that. Let's plug in that cube. And let's get a random numbers array free. Uh, I want to generate the X, Y, Z positions. Okay. Let's spread them out. Minus 10 to 10. Okay. So, right now, all of this is moving because we're using this transform here to change everything, which is not a bad thing. So, hmm, it all feels very, um, very symmetrical. Um, like everything's just kind of like dead on the camera. And that's actually something I just want to kind of break off right now, I'm thinking, and I'm just wondering how to do that. I mean, we've got transform view up here. Um, and we can use that to rotate the view, as you can see. That's not what I'm looking for. So as you can see, just by using the transform view here, I'm stopping everything being like dead center on um, the camera. But we've kind of lost that effect right now where um, we were inside the cube, right? So. Okay, that was kind of cool. Hmm. So you know what, I'm just going to disable this for a minute. I'm going to use a little op that I like called gate trigger. Uh, just basically, you just click this and you bypass the trigger. So I'm using this right now to turn off that um, potential mirror effect there, which can kick in. Okay, so I want to get back inside the cube, but I want to see the rest of the cubes. Now, this, of course, is a little bit difficult because we're using uh, random numbers array free. So, I know, let's try this. I'm going to go to transform view. I'm just going to move us back, which can also be really, really cool if we want to do that. And let's go to the mesh instance. So let me think about this for a minute. Yeah. So um, everything right now is in positions like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and stuff like that. But that's not all we want. I, I want to have stuff in a kind of grid. So I'm going to use array floor. Um, this rounds numbers down. So if you've got a number like 0 0.5, it now becomes 0. If you've got 1.8, it now becomes 1. So we're turning floating point numbers into integer numbers. So I'm going to add this. And basically that's going to give us this kind of like grid like appearance. Let me just try this out. I want these cubes to move around with the seed. As you can see, when we use the seed, it does that. Looks pretty crazy right now. I'm going to go back in a touch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this. They're going from minus 10 to 10. So I'm going to make them into a kind of a block cube. So we can put it on 0 0.25 or 1, and they do this. So we can put it on 0 0.1. OK. 0 0.25. So we can do some interesting stuff there. Let's, uh, let's go in a direction that I like. But these jump. So you know what? Um, I, I made a part before to, there we go. Uh, trigger a random number on a half trigger. So there's no point in reinventing the wheel right now. OK, let's go here. Let's grab this. So I want a different random seed uh, every half trigger. Let's just do that then. Um, trigger random number. This needs a trigger. So I'm going to go here. And I'm just going to grab uh, T1. 
Okay. So, ah. Okay. I'm doing this wrong. Check random number. I want a really big seed. Uh, 0 to 57, 11. And I'm going to put it on integer. That was it. I wanted to use this for the seed. So I'm going to plug this into random seed. And every time this changes, it's going to trigger a different position now. Let's make that a little bit more obvious with one. So I want them to kind of float from place to place. So we have the smooth up, which smooths out jumps and values. So we've got um, smooth array, which will do the same thing. It needs a trigger. So I'm going to grab this one from basic material. And just so we can see this for a minute, I'm just going to, I'm going to gate these two. I don't want to disconnect them because if I disconnect them, I might forget what they were plugged into. So that's why I just use gate number here. So you can see there with when we change um, the seed number with trigger random number, we give them um, a different position. And then if we multiply this by say 0 0.2, 5. So what would happen if we go between 0 0.25 and 1? Okay, so let's do that. So let's now say every whole bar, one, one trigger, we're now gonna trigger a random number. Okay. And we want it to go from 0 0.25 to one. Okay. So um, let's say I wanna have six different states. So say integers zero to five, which is six states. Okay. And then I'm gonna get this, and I'm gonna put it into a map range. And the map range, I'm then going to say uh, 0 to 5 is the old minimum max. And I want it to go from 0 0.25 to, let's just even do 1.25. Try it out. This is now going to go into the multiply. And this is going to work because the smooth array is going to smooth out the jumps. So we should get small and bigger cubes. So sometimes they're going to be really big. So actually, maybe I want them to be way more spaced out. Um, yeah, so let's put this on, say, 2. That could be way too much. Let's try it out. So the reason I'm doing this is like the, the trigger random number and the map range, that's kind of like this way of um, being sure that I'm always going to hit like um, a minimum and a maximum, um, basically. Okay. Now let's plug those rotates back in. The gate number. Now the sky's the limit here, right? Like I, I could, I could just say, um, hey, I don't want to rotate all of the time, and I could um, gate this number so it's only open um, like half of the time, and then it's not so busy. So, so there's all of these rules that you can kind of like um, create, um, basically. I still feel though like I've lost that original look um, that I had where we were kind of like inside of a cube which makes sense, it's all good. We're, we're experimenting here, we're trying stuff out. I mean, what happens if we put this in zero, then we're like right inside of it. And we also get some pretty cool, crazy stuff. And we can never be sure we're gonna be inside of the cube, right? But maybe there's a little trick we can do. Um, hmm. I would expect us to be inside of that cube right now because it is unactive. So I'm just going to disconnect the mesh instance. I just want to find out what's going on here. Okay, there's my cube. So that's where I want it to be. I want to plug in this in that disappears. That is not what I would expect. Hmm. That's a shame. I wonder if I make a copy of this. If I do that. Hmm. That is strange. So there's something I'm not getting there. Which is fine. All right, let's not focus on that too much. That's something I can just solve some other time. Let's save it for a minute. 
Now I'm kind of caught right now because I like it with the mesh instance look, um, but I also just really liked it when we're inside the cube. I don't know. Um, I really liked the, the, the minimalism of um, this look. So hey, we, we tried this out. Cool. Let's put this here. Okay. Maybe let's go with the idea that uh, somebody said before with one shape inside of another. And let's swap the music up a bit. So to do that, we'd kind of like had to create um, a separate um, transform here. It's not too difficult. So I can just get this. Let's just tidy this up a touch. And you know what? I'm actually just going to use the good old gate trigger here. So I just remember that this was there. Yeah, that's really confusing to me that the main cube is not active when the um, mesh instance is on. Uh, this is strange. Hmm. I'm kind of confused right now. Uh, Panda saying he thinks I need a new material. I'm just confused why this is now not on the screen. That's a, that's a really weird thing to me. Wow, okay, this was strange. This was connected here. And that starts this cube appearing. That's, that's, I think that's a bug. That's okay, that can happen. So if I'm gonna plug this in here. Okay, all right. And I think it had to do with this being plugged in now. Okay, I think I found a bug. No worries, okay, let's just, do this now. So this is the weird part. I disconnect that and then the cube comes back. <laughs> okay. All right. Today's our visuals. I hope that's a compliment. All right. So basically, um, okay. Yeah. The idea of another cube inside of that. Let, let, let's just do this. This is uh, kind of cool. So what is, I, I'm going to just do this now. Var set texture. Um, yeah, it's more readable if you just pull the cables off like that, but it's going to get really busy right now. So I know this is like my diffuse. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to call it um, stripes diffuse. And then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do var set texture again. And this is the, ah, I'm doing it wrong. This is the um, diffuse because it has color. My bad. I'm gonna go here and do the set texture. And this is gonna be, is this the mask? Yeah, okay. So we go here and we say stripes, mask. Okay. Gonna disconnect these. Far get texture. I also just want to show you guys these new ops, basically. Okay, so I'm going to go here, stripes mask. I'm going to copy paste this one, and then I'm going to get stripes diffuse. And if I plug that in, we should just have what we had a minute ago. There we go. Great. Look at that. Bad boy go. I still like this cube. All right, I'm going to save. So the reason I'm doing that is because I just want to move this out of the way, and I don't want to have to have all these cables going through everywhere. So, um, you know what? We can just move this away for a minute. Uh, let me just do this. I don't need to be using that right now. Actually, let's just do it like this. So I can just copy all of this. Um, just make a bit of space. Cool. 
So this is actually my main cube. So let's put it to the left. That kind of makes a little bit more um, sense to me. And I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to say trigger extender. I just like tidy patches. And I'm going to move this down. I find this just makes a patch a little bit more readable. Cool. Two straight lines. All right. I'm going to paste that here. Nah, I'm not sure if I'm going to get bitten right now with the, the draw order. So I'm just going to disconnect that and I'm going to gate this and this. And let me just test this for a minute. Okay, so I've got that cube there, but it's got the same material. Let's just turn it off for now. Okay, solid. It's solid. It's got a different material. Could use Lambert. Uh, accepts a diffuse. Course. Mm, yeah, I don't know what I did. Okay, let's just do it like this then. I got a bit mixed up with the variable names there. No biggie. Colorized texture. So I don't want this one to be um, transparent. That's this effect of the, the other cube, right? Just want to make it easy to see right now. Okay. And I wonder what would happen if we just grab these random textures right here and uh, add that. Okay. And then I want this to not work with the kick, but with the snare. So I want to flip it, not kick snare, but snare kick. Okay. Wow, that base kick line is intense. Okay, let's make this cube smaller, it's too big. Yeah, I'm kind of struggling with getting it to look pretty and nice, but it's okay, it's all work in progress. Let's try this again, 0.75. You know, it might be more officially recognizable if we... Yeah, that looks better. That's not just a standard cube the whole time. Let's add in a little bit more interest. It's, I mean, it's getting really busy right now. I'm probably turning on like way too many uh, things. A little, uh, little thing there from Undefined Country Boy. By the way, guys who like lights, since the last update, Lambert works with all lights like Fong. Hope to see some patches with that very soon, um, guys and girls. So uh, yeah, that's also something that we could use in the patches um, later. Now, I, I'm just curious how bad this is gonna look. Um, you never know. It could look actually really kind of cool. I have no idea what I just did there. <laughs> I think I broke something. I don't know. Okay, we need a smooth array. Let's just plug this in there. 
No, okay. This, I think, Panda's right with the whole needing new material thing. This is a really weird thing to me. I don't know, we have to apply the material, right? I'm not too sure what's happening there. I'm really uh, not getting that. Yeah, this definitely has to do with something with material assignment. That is really, really strange. Okay, let's disconnect. Yeah, okay, that's not only mesh instance. Uh, okay, sure. I'm really enjoying the way that all the different elements are coming together. Of course, there's 9 million different things I could try and make right now, but in the sake of keeping it simple, I think this has um, it's been a nice exploration phase with um, starting to build some uh, VJ software. I mean, there's so many different things we could do. Where we could make like a separate layer <clears throat> with mesh instance, so we could turn that into a texture. We could then like give that post processing. We could like impose it um, behind the cube. I just really like the way that you know the the visuals are really just following uh, the music, which was pretty much the main aim of tonight because I wasn't sure where I was going to go with this. I mean, really, the material there on the red cube is horrible with the displaced texture. <laughs> I just thought I tried something. Okay. I mean, we can just basically have a shaded uh, cube. And this alike is really just nice how that works. Um, and maybe we can move this one. Maybe we can move the red cube like up and down or left and right. So we could say, um, give me minus two to two, right? Um, do I need the map range then? No, not for what I was going to do. So it's minus two to two, goes to smooth. Let's plug it into position X. And I hope this is going to work. Yeah, there we go. So that actually doesn't work at all, but hey, you got to try this stuff out. So we're going to do position Z. You know what, this is wrong. We want it to stay in the middle. What I want to do is just change its scale to something like really crazy and extreme, just so that, not that one. Yeah, this one. Let's say um, 0 0.2, um, to five. So the majority of the time, it's going to be um, a big number. And let's plug it into Was it this one? Yeah, it was sad that I wanted it on. Let's just put this on. Yeah, we kind of had it like a cube again. These both rotating, yeah. And let's now put this on two. Now, of course, I could make that red cube move along with the inside of the blue cube, but I don't think I'm going to do that for now. It's nice that there's just this element there. Who knows? Maybe I'll change my mind later. So, let me just get rid of these. Hmm. Okay. Um, ah, sorry, Thomas. Maybe keep the second cube in the center of the first. Yeah, you know what? I, let's just do that for a minute, right? Uh, this is position Z of the first cube. So we can just grab this and we can put it there. Thomas, that was a great idea. Yeah, that's actually way better. The only problem is we sometimes go inside of that red um, cube, but that's that could also be called art, right? So actually, 
uh, we scale it on a different axis. I'm not sure which one. Actually, that just creates happy accidents. It's just a shame when it all goes black. Um, let's put this on. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's a lot cooler. All right, let's save it for a minute. I mean, yeah, what what can you do with two cubes and uh, and a, and, a, and a texture? Every time the music dies down like that, I uh, I think it's uh, kind of crashed or uh, something like that. But it's just a, a natural break in the music. Okay. All right, everybody. Um, we got we got an interesting thing going on here. So you know we've got our MIDI framework. This could just so this could just all be thrown into a sub patch, and right now a lot of this would then run faster. And you know what? I think I've done enough now that I'm kind of comfortable doing that. Because you know if you, sometimes if you have a lot of ops on the screen, uh, it can slow down with pretty much any program. So let's do this. Let's let's grab all of this and let's save first just because never a bad idea. I'm going to click create sub patch and we now we're, we're now in uh, we now have this sub patch here. Let me zoom back out and I'm going to put it near my main loop. Uh, I'm going to make a comment up because this logic is kind of done for now. So a lot of these abstractions that you saw down here, I could also do this, um, but I didn't want to right now. And I can also click the sub patch and say MIDI all like this, but I, I just like to have comments so things are really kind of clear. So let's just comment this kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to say displace texture. Okay, and here we have the post effects. Uh, I actually thought I would have gotten more done tonight. Um, this was just uh, a little bit, yeah, it's, it's a new thing for me to do like this, like build something like this during the stream. Uh, it goes a lot slower than I think when I'm trying to talk and uh, um, yeah, visualize. It's kind of jamming, right? We're jamming with cables. So this meshes into stuff I'm gonna do some other time. Okay, so let's, uh, let's crank the music up a bit. So you have to imagine right now that you've got like a MIDI controller attached with knobs on it, right? You know, this is when you can jam along with the Ableton live set. You could go here and you could say, right, um, uh, I, I wanna I wanna like change the index of this like displaced texture by myself. Now, one of the things that you should really keep track of is this, like um, it'd be really difficult, right, to, um, change this number on time with the beat. So you've got this like MIDI controller and it's got um, 0 to 127 uh, values. So that's 128. And you, and you want to turn that between 0, 1, 2, 3 on the beat. That's, that's not going to work. You're, you're really going to struggle. You know, you don't want to think about that kind of stuff when you're VJing. You just want to, you just want to make something happen. So here's a little cool trick. So what I'm going to do now, just imagine it's a MIDI controller. Uh, I'm going to grab the number up. Just let me let me have a number, right? And this could be me with my MIDI controller, okay? Um, and but I only want it to change, you know, on a certain count. So what we do is we grab the um, uh, trigger set set number and trigger. So it outputs a number when triggered. So it's kind of like making a buffer, right? So we plug this in here and. So we've got this kind of like with live, right? We've got this like um, quantization setting here. So every two bars. So as you can see, stuff's flashing and you know, the rate they change is determined by the follow action, but this change here is determined by this setting there. So if I do this, see it changes on a down count, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna press enter. Wait, change. So 
we want that kind of functionality inside the cables. Um, we want it to only change on like a downbeat. So that's actually really easy to do. That's why we built this entire framework. Um, so you could have your MIDI controller and you could tweak all these numbers and they would only take place on a down count now. So I'll just go here and I go um, trigger receive. Okay, and I could now say, I only want this to happen every half bar, right? So let's let's see what happens here. Flow mode slows the patch down a bit, right? So I'll go here and I'll plug this in here. And as you can see, that number is only getting sent through on the count. So if I now put this on zero, you wait, and it's only going to happen on that trigger. Let's put it on a bar, actually, on one trigger. So imagine this is your MIDI controller. You, so you could now go ba 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 bam and tweak three or four knobs um, in a second or two, and all of the changes would take place on the downbeat, basically. So I'm going to put this on two, and I'm going to do it like just after the number's been triggered. Didn't happen yet, and then it happens. So that's a really cool way to just like this little trick here. You have your trigger on the downbeat, you do set number and trigger, and you are guaranteed that any of your hard changes like changing an index will only take place on a downbeat with the music, right? Which is really cool because you want your visuals to feel like they're in sync. And there's also a lot of ways to make them kind of go out of sync, but that's something for another time. Okay. Hi, uh, sorry, quick question from Seagull Rush. Seagull Rush, what? that's a pretty cool name. Hi, I was wondering about the amount of gradients and the optimal performance on low grade devices. Good question. Uh, it's a lot of questions, actually. Um, so, first of all, um, this, like, for example, running on a mobile device, well, you know, it's all a question of GPU power, right? I mean, phones today are pretty uh, powerful and incredible <laughs> compared to how they used to be. You know, they've basically got many GPUs on them. You can get a lot of stuff in cables to run very quickly on a mobile. That's one of the advantages of Cables GL. You can make a patch, you can deploy it, and it will work on mobile, which is kind of cool. So, um, to get back to the question, uh, the amount of gradients. Well, I assume a gradient should mean these things here. We've got a lot, um, and the thing is, you got to imagine you you can like combine these, right? We could we could get the Voronoise, and we could plug this um, in there. And the thing is, if it's not being um, controlled by the main loop trigger right now, like if this isn't getting a trigger, it's it's not rendering, it's not using resources. It's the same here. So this root trigger is a really cool way to um, just swap from one means um, to another, uh, basically. So, um, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, some PCs are, are weaker than phones, that's, that's for sure. Uh, and it just depends on the WebGL compatibility, right? Like some ops and texture effects um, only work with WebGL 1. Uh, a lot of them work with WebGL 2. Uh, those are just edge cases um, that you just unfortunately have to discover by um, trying stuff out. So everybody, it's getting to um, near 10.30. It's been a, a long stream. I'm feeling a little bit tired right now. It's uh, been a lot of focus, but um, my question is, does anybody have any questions or any requests that I could implement with the last little bit of time? Um, that I've got left. And by the way, once again, real big shout out to Obverse, um, Obverse for um, providing us with the Ableton Live track. He's got his new uh, very first EP coming out in uh, apparently 3020, which I think is a little bit of a joke to um, um, his uh, music coming out uh, later than planned. But uh, Obverse, are you there in the chat? Uh, if you are, could you please post a link again to your um, SoundCloud? Uh, and then if any of these lovely people want to follow what you're doing, they're going to get a notification when your new music comes out. Does it only run online? Um, actually, yes and no. So Cables runs online, that's the whole idea. 
Uh, it's one of its most powerful things. Uh, when you use it more, you'll figure out why. Uh, we've also, we're also working on um, a program called The Player. If I'm correct, it's uh, an Electron build. Ah, thank you. Double the fun, double the love. There's the two links. Um, so basically what that would mean is, is that you could um, download a patch to the player, put that on a USB stick. It's like a standalone executable. You could plug that into any computer, start it up, and it would work. It would have all the bundled assets. The player would not have the editor. The editor is online only um, right now. Okay. Um, can you organize these cables? Straighten them. Ha! <laughs> This is a very organized patch, uh, Spiked Maniac. Believe it or not, you, you should really check some of the uh, public patches um, that we've got. Th this is probably going to be one of the most ordered uh, patches that you're ever going to see. Like, this is, this is really organized, man. Like, really, I mean, this is a thing of beauty. Check this out. And what, what's this organized about this? This is, this is super readable, right? Guys, back me up here. Yeah, this is still Hello World, for sure, for sure. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. I mean, this is like before why, let me just get rid of that gate trigger. This is why I grabbed this trigger extender. It's just basically to extend the trigger. I did that because if it'd be over here, as you can see, the cables would like overlap over the ops. Uh, but that's not something I want to do too much in a stream. Um, you know, we could also use wireless um, send trigger and send uh, and receive trigger. There's a, there's a lot of ways to tidy this stuff up, basically. Sub patches help as well. Like when you're done with something, then just get rid of it and uh, hide it away, like the MIDI stuff. Ah, no, no offense taken. Um, it's good. It's, this is, I think this is a nice joke with um, uh, node-based programming. Like, you know, how do you how do you keep a, an overview on it? I hope I'm teaching people here like good. Um, patching practices that would be nice because it is re it is really difficult to make a big patch like this and to keep an overview on it um, basically it's really not that simple all right okay let's let's make this bad boy uh, a bit bigger and we've got the new aspect part here so I'm gonna put it on 16 by 9 there we go look at this okay So I'm just curious, I forgot if this works or not. If I now say, um, open a new window. Hey, okay, let's just do this for a minute. Let's see it full screen for a moment. So you, now you're gonna see some pixels and I just wanna point out, point out why. Um, that's because almost all of the texture sizes for now, I put on 512 by 512. And of course, when the texture comes um, that close to the screen, you know, you're gonna see some pixelization. Uh, we've got some different um, texture modes like uh, nearest, linear, uh, mit map. These are different ways to um, make this stuff look smoother. I don't wanna go too much in depth into that now because it's just so busy on the screen that would just be hard to see. But you, as you can see, this is really cool. Um, this opening new window is still running all of the MIDI ops in the background. It's all connected now. I don't need to do anything. And that's kind of like one of the things I think it'd be really cool that when people build VJ software with cables and then they throw it into the player, we already tested this, and all of your MIDI settings are uh, retained. So you shouldn't change stuff in your MIDI hardware, but you normally never need to. <clears throat> um, so that's really cool because you could make some cables, um, you could make VJ software with cables, throw it in a VJ, on a USB stick, and then use that to VJ without an internet connection. <clears throat> so let me close this off. All right. Uh, one minute. Yeah, right, cool. All right, thanks, Steamer. Just saw that. <coughs> Steam, I need some water. Mm. So, one thing that I would actually like to do with this is um, just imagine everything you're seeing now. That's like one render layer let's just call it that it's um, going into um, a render to texture and we've got post processing now ideally in my head you know if you want to start creating a huge amount of possibilities we just do everything we did there again but in a different way with a different look and 
then we would combine the two of those together. Uh, and basically we'd have like two layers, right, which can go over each other and then we can start to swap. And, you know, there's so much stuff we could do here, you know, um, I'm, tr I'm just trying to keep the scope like a little bit, um, yeah, reasonable. So like, ah, I can't help it. Once I get started with this stuff, I just don't want to stop. Let's go here. Let's grab this. I just want to show you one or two things. So we got this, we got this cube right there. Uh, we've got a lot more um, geometry. So we're going to go here now. Um, now I forgot the namespace because I'm tired. Ops.gl.meshes. So let's pull this out. Um, Ops.gl.meshes. Okay. Um, no idea how this is going to look now. Let's grab a cylinder. Let's put this on one. Look at that. Bam. Like, actually, I just think that looks all kinds of cool. Seriously, I like it. Um, let's get the cylinder. Um, double the bump. Let's put UV mode on Atlas. And I think that gives us the caps. Yeah, at the, at the end there. And as you can see, we can just start, like, this is the idea of the framework. We can just, like, make this now change between um, zero and one, and we, we can just start swapping um, geometry out, right? You know, this is this is why I try to say like it's a framework. We we build like this, um, like a set of stuff in there that we can then just expand upon. I can pull this out now, and I can say, hey, um, give me. <laughs> I'm not sure right now. Like I said, I'm, I'm getting a bit on the tired um, side. Cylinder, yeah, like, let, let's see that. Uh, a pyramid, sorry. Let's see how that's gonna look. Oh yeah, wait, wait, wait for it to rotate. That's, that, that is, that is just all kinds of awesome. Sorry, I, I just love it when uh, happy accidents come together and as everybody should know, uh, I'm a pretty big fan of Bob Ross. What is causing the aliasing on the lines? Ah, that's what I just covered. So, uh, one, these are small texture sizes, right? They're 512 by 512. So when the geometry is a bit far away, you know, this, this isn't going to be really so visible. And with Image Compose, we've got like, um, we've got different filters, like nearest linear mitmap. I think mitmap um, is probably going to help uh, with this. I lost my geometry. Where did it go? I don't know what I just did, but I killed it. Oh boy. Linear, linear. All right. Mm, ah, okay. This is only a single color, so that makes no sense. Mitmap. Let's put this there. So this can make stuff look a bit smudged and a bit blurry, but that's okay. But you know, if I'm going to go here now and I'm going to put this on, say, 1024 by 1024, it's going to look a lot crisper. But I mean, you're always going to get a certain amount of aliasing with like, um, perfectly straight lines running perpendicular um, to things, basically. Okay, one minute. Um. Uh, guys, is this stream still working for you? I'm having a bit of a dropout here, what I'm looking at with Twitch. It'd just be nice to know if uh, everybody there is seeing what I'm seeing on the screen. Is this still all working for everybody? I think live is uh, hogging some resources here. Let's do control S. Okay, I'm just gonna pause that. Uh, yeah, we have an undo, uh, Bruce Lane. We definitely do. Uh, but I'm not gonna click that now because I'm not too sure what I just did. Okay, uh, back on track. I, I've paused the switch stream right now. I think the GPU is getting a little bit tired of doing all these different things at once. So you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one last thing to wrap this up. Um, I'm gonna get a